all right hello everyone and peace of christ to all of you please invite your friends and share the link with whoever you know uh, today our topic is about shia and you know we always talk usually we talk about sunni because uh, they present the majority of uh, muslim population uh, but uh, sunni is many sect too same as shia shia is not one sect but all roads lead to rome Shia are people who really worship the family of Muhammad, specifically the family of Ali, starting from Ali and his children. The Shia, they have many beliefs. In Arabic, we call them batin wa dahir, which means outside belief and inside belief. Shia, they practice taqiyya as daily bread and breakfast, which means when a Shia, he says something to you about his religion, does not mean he mean it as an example there is a person all of you you know his name is Imam Tawhidi Imam Tawhidi is a great example of Shiaism professional liars and he is willing to say anything to make you happy anything just use your imagination he is willing to say to you that the caliphate were criminals he will say to you uh, you know there is Muslims who commit a crime blah 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 but he will not dare to say the truth which is what the Shia believe that they already believe in violence too so you know they have a very sneaky way the Shia in order to deceive you and make you believe in something how far away from what they believe so they have to believe they have outside belief and they have an inside belief outside is what you would hear from them I st what I stand for is stabilizing, is stabilizing or, or establishing sorry a global peace that is the big fat lie <laughs> Ali the one who he follow he was the biggest criminal ever in history actually Ali he killed more people than Muhammad himself so the guy who want to establish peace he follow Ali you see how they lie Condemning terrorism, Ali he burned people alive. Ali he burned people alive. Gender equality, the Shia believe in renting women, the same as the Muslim Sunni. The Shia believe that a man he can beat a woman. Tolerance and love, absolutely to the point Shia and Muslims they kill each other until today. The whole war we see in Syria and Iraq is about Shia and Sunni. The whole war we see in Yemen is about Shia and Sunni. The whole war is happening in Pakistan and it's about Shia and Sunni. The, uh, everything and Afghanistan is Shia and Sunni. But they believe in tolerance and love. And if we ask this guy where he got this from, this is why he will never dare to even get close to me. We offer him to debate me, uh, but he want to join David Wood. You know? I'm not lucky and David would everybody wanna wanna join him but nobody want to join me so today we have a sister who she is an ex-muslim she asked me if she can call and uh, I will let her present herself she is from Iran and she will call soon and we will hear uh, some of her story and then we will continue our conversation so please invite your friends uh, and if you are a Muslim, feel free to post a comment. Remember, our, our teaching is not about against Muslim, it's against Islam. And against uh, scholars and, and liars, or they claim to be leaders or imam, etc., but they lie to us. We are here to fight lies, as simple as it is. Uh, we will call our sister here. And see if she is on ready. Uh, 
if you look with me in the screen, enhancing education. Hmm. Shia society is the most behind cave time society. And then Shia, they speak about education. All right, I think our sister, her name here is Shahbaz. Shahbaz, Shahbaz, I don't know. So we will call her, let's see. Shahnaz, Shahnaz, sorry, Shahnaz. Shahinaz, I think. Hello? Hi. Hey, how are you? Fine, thank you. Uh, uh, is my voice okay? I think your voice is fine for me, and I hope it's, fi it's fine for everybody. Uh, we were talking about the Shia, as we, you know, like you asked me, because you are coming from a Shia background yourself. So before we start talking, sure. maybe you can, you know, present yourself, who you are, what you used to be, etc. And you can give, like, only give uh, information which you feel comfortable to give, please. Thank you. Uh, so, first of all, I think I can mess up double. I lost you. Can you hear me level two or? I lost you. Okay, go ahead, say again. Okay, so um, I have a really good connection, so, but I just want to know if you hear me double or not. No, I hear you fine. I, I hear you fine. Okay, sorry. So, uh, first of all, I want to thank you, Christian Prince, um, for doing this because obviously, uh, uh, I have no uh, a, a public channel or anything. I didn't inspire to have one, but you take a lot of time and you're very humble. So I want to thank you for uh, not caring about fame or anything. And just as someone asks you something really in a random place, like, can you, you know, speak about certain issues that's really important? You just said yes right away. I think that's awesome. And um, yeah, uh, I'm really, uh, I feel, uh, honored to uh, to speak with a person with such a heart um about me um i was a born muslim child um i mean like i never chose to be one or be born in a family uh, or in a society that would dictate islam as uh, you know the norm not as a choice so i went to a islamic school in uh, the middle east um and um from a, like from in iran i uh, this is where i was born and um from a very young age i remember creeds like uh, magbar israel and magbar america which is held like held to or debt to america and debt to, uh, to israel mm -hmm. and certain stuff but as an age a very early age my mom shunned islam because it was just um in before that i was white some kind of a cultural Islam that Iranians didn't know. They thought it was such a good thing and you would kiss the Quran and you would put it aside and everything. But you would try to be your inherently, you know, created person that God created to be good uh, in a, you know, in a fashion or sort, sort they try to be good people. But, um, you know, in the uh, 40 years ago, Islam came to Iran as a some kind of a modern, it was modernized by by Khomeini and, and it was, you know, a, a very different concept. But so Shia Islam for me as a person of my background, my mom uh, kind of was in, in a very uh, caliphate kind of in the name of Republic, but caliphate kind of way came into Iran and we flee Iran. So my background is just eight years in a country that was Islamic. After that, my mom went totally, she said, if this is God, because in, in Iran, you say Khoda Hafez, which means may God be your protector. When you say bye, that's our bye. Mm -hmm. And I remember that I was 16 or something. I said that to my mom, but we were already in, in Europe living here. And she said, may a dog be my protector, but not God. So that was how angry she was at Allah because she read the Quran and she was like, and the Hadith as much as she could. and was very rare in that time to see what you know what this whole thing was why was everything changing the universities she wanted to go study law but that was just you know closed off for two years everything was closed off and they would she would hear the most strange things ever and so she left islam and she we flee islam my mom and brother and my dad to 
the west so after that i like started like going yeah you know, as any other kid going to school but particularly um, i went to the christian schools which was really awesome for me but then again after an age uh, of 18 i traveled back to iran and i was really interested in in the middle east and the culture the classical culture because i was all intertwined with islam so i started this whole path on uh, Sufism and Molavi and Shams and all these people, which was all from the East, Far East, influences from the uh, Far East, but it sounded like better than Islam. It sounded some kind of a self-actualization through, you know, spiritual practice of mm. some sort. Uh, but then again, Islam, after studied like the, the last few, seven years, I've been listening to people like loads of people like david wood and other people and uh, i've you know <laughs> come to understand real islam through people in the west which is awesome uh and then i came across you and i was like the things that you say and the things that you know about islam is so deep it's so deeply i mean like it's not that islam is deep but you go deep into the uh to the adultery to everything that is really me you know, if people would know this iranian people would know this actually what you're saying uh it will just like kill a lot of it a lot of it for them uh in their minds at least in even one hour so i'm really excited because i think a lot of people could listen to this uh, after the translation and actually come to see what like who was Khadija. Like, so i, I just want to go with your title because i saw that you changed the title to uh, shia islam so you are you know free to start whatever you want to start with. And um, I have a lot of questions about Shia too, so we can do that in that format if you like to. No, I, so I, this I, was promise my you, I promise you, don't don't tell me. Actually, you wanted to tell me the topic. I said, don't tell me, right? Just give me the question. So yes. I keep my promise. Yeah. So, what is your question? Go ahead, no problem. Yes. Okay, so um, in Iran, we have this very weird concept about Khadija. Um, mm -hmm. We think we have been, you know, thought this for years now decades that she was a very um very um, uh, we say woman she was a very good woman she was uh, very articulate but also very learned and she was very rich as she was his muhammad's first wife and i like you to start about her character in the most detailed way fashion that you can because i think that's uh, yeah that's a huge lie one of the lies you see first of all you know, uh, always uh, Shia and Sunni, both of them, they share the same thing. That we have to praise anything touched or live with Muhammad. Even if it's a cat. So anything around Muhammad, belong to Muhammad, owned by Muhammad, have to be praised. Mm -hmm. Except the Shia, they always insult Aisha. And the reason for that, Aisha, she took an army after Muhammad's death to kill Ali. And that make her rejected by the Shia and they curse her in every prayer so Khadija the same as the rest of other women she was supposedly something special for Muhammad because all the women of Muhammad are special but, but here you know uh, the Shia because when they focus in insulting Aisha they try to focus in to make themselves look better look okay, you see we insult Aisha we attack Aisha but look we respect very much Khadija so the point of respecting Khadija so much is not really because they care for Khadija as much as to cover up their insult to the wife of Muhammad, which is his favorite uh, uh, child wife. So uh, goli, right? Uh, sorry? Uh, we, in Iran, we say so goli, which is the favorite wife, the favorite Yeah, the favorite uh, because she's a, she's a child. You know, Muhammad, he liked to have sex with his children. So she is yes. his favorite. This is why Muhammad, he said he, 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 he favor Aisha the same as he favor a dish than other dish, which means his, this is his favorite dish. So Muhammad, he considered all wow. women are dishes and Aisha is the favorite wow. dish. Yeah. So when the Muslims, they say, and the Shia, they say uh, that uh, uh, Khadija is a very special woman. Well, all the women of Muhammad are special because Khadija, the important about her, she is very rich, even though she is old. But Muhammad, he used her money and her, let us say, position in the society so he can be called like a master. So a person who was no one, poor, have no home. Muhammad don't have a house even. 
he was a son, uh, he's a one or an orphan actually most likely nobody knows really who is real of uh, the real father of Muhammad and there's many evidence about that and I believe strongly this is my own belief the real father of Muhammad is Waraq ibn Nufal and this is why you see wow. the story of Khadija always attached to Waraq ibn Nufal who is a cousin to Khadija and this is why I believe Khadija was uh, can you spell that? Waraka, uh, Waraka ibn Nufal, Waraka. Waraka was uh, was a Nasara, not a Christian. You see the Quran. If we go in the Quran, we will find that not a single place the Quran says the word Christians. The Quran called us Nasara, and we as Arab Christians, we never use the word Nasara. We do not know even where this word coming from. Uh, let us say, generally speaking, unless you are a very educated person to know. So if you go in the Quran. You will, sign, you will find only the word Nasara. Okay, but who are they, the Nasara? The Muslim, when they translate the Quran, you will say, they will see they translate it as a Christian. In fact, they are not Christians and they have nothing to do with the Christians. Uh, and even Muhammad, he called the, the Jews. Right, we're sectarian, right? Uh, Nasara is a, is, a, is a Christian cult, which is the same as Jehovah's Witnesses today. They are not Christians. And, yeah, they're sectarian. Yeah. yeah. In the same same way, you know, for Muhammad, he don't even know how to call the Jews, so he called them Yahud. But Yahud yes, are yeah. not really the name of the Jews. How you can call them Yahud? Because um, it, even the word actually in English, Jews, is not really accurate. Because Yahud is you are talking about a specific group of of the Jews, not the Jews. Yes. So Muhammad, yeah. he do not know how to call the Christians. He like he misquote the name of the Christians, misquote the name of the uh, Jews, he called the Christian Nasara, he called the Jews Yahud, and both are wrong. Now, the Muslim they say, including the Shia, that Hadith. What is the was, right? What, what would be right? The, the right face for Jews, right here? But, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Israeli, because simply they are the oh. children of Israel. Exactly. You know, hmm. yeah. Uh, like uh, Jacob's name, you know, that's how yeah, the tribe actually, tell. Even yeah. the Quran, even the Quran, kept them, called them that name many times. But Muhammad, when he want, he called them Yahud. When he yeah. want, he called them the children of Israel. So, and what does that mean, Yahud? The Yahud is coming from the Yahuda. You know that, like there is a. Uh, maybe we can make sections. Uh, no, no. Like the, the, the there is there, there's a tribe. The Jews they have a tribes. So. Uh, every tribe have a name or have let us say a title so Muhammad obviously he cannot defend uh, the, like uh, differentiate between uh, a name of a group and the belief because Yahud mm -hmm. Yahud is not a belief Yahud is not a, a tribe yeah, yeah it's it's an like it's an it's a group of people who have who belong to a uh, like a, um, Certain tribe. a, yeah. a tribe or let us say an ethnic or etc but the Yahud yeah. is not all the Jews are Yahud. You know what I mean? So not all the Jews are Yahud. So what do you mean when you say Yahud? So in the same when you say the Christians, they say the Nasara. There's not Nasara. even a single Christian is a Nasara. So who is a Nasara? Nasara simply mm -hmm. are people who are rejected by the Christian at that time, who they became, let us say, extreme in their belief. Uh, and this is where Muhammad, he started getting his ideas, like uh, the Nasara, they believe... It's some sort of Ar Arianism, right? They are what? Uh, in, it, it is, uh, this whole Nazaritan uh, stuff is uh, the, their beliefs, but some Naz kind of a Nasara, Arianism. Nasara is a word mean poor. Poor. So they call them poor not because they are poor with money, because the Christian called them poor for not understanding the Bible. So they've been called the poor and they are rejected. Hmm? Really? Yeah. Like when you call yeah, somebody so, yeah. uh, the the silly, the stupid, you know. So they yeah. the Christians are polite, but they don't call them stupid, I'm, they call I mean, them poor. I, I meant actually this this uh, these people who the Christians, the real Christian followers of Christ, which Sean the Nazarian, I think their belief in what I have read about them was that it, there was an influence of Arianism, uh, Arianism, well, a, which is, is also a, very. This is, a, this is a mix of uh, of many beliefs at that time, oh. and those Nasara is kind of a mix. So they kind of like they have a sum from uh, the from many cult. Uh, you see what happened in the Arabian Peninsula because it was out of the control of the Roman. Anyone his outlaw wanted, he ran to the Arabian Peninsula. So uh, the Jews too, 
they were outlaw by the Roman why because in the year 614 the Jews they helped the Persian and you are a Persian they helped the Persian to occupy Jerusalem uh, when the Persian occupied Jerusalem they slaughter all the Christians inside and they burned the Holy Church so really yeah and this is was in the year 16 okay. 614 and actually even the Quran speak about this incident where the Quran says that the room the Roman there's a chapter it's called the chapter of the Roman the Roman were defeated and they are going to be victorious after defeat so uh, this is why this is why uh, the Jews uh, through history they always either go to Arabia or go to Persia why because both territories is out of the control of the Roman who be they become a Christians so uh, if we go to the chapter of a room we will find chapter 30 verse number one and two you know the Roman has been defeated in the near year you know land which means the most close land so the the story here is speaking about what happened near year and uh, uh, you know uh, uh, Muhammad obviously he he was under the influence of what's happening around him and he add anything to his Quran right away uh, but because of those things uh, you know because the Roman or uh, became Christians and the Roman and the Christians did not allow uh, let us say uh, I'm talking about kings now they did not allow those people to practice their cult between the Christians so they run and they escape to the Arabia Peninsula or the Jews they escape most of them to the to the Persia actually until now there's Jews in Persia right so yes and actually the, the uh, in, in Iran before Islam the the, the Jews they very they are very important uh, in the in the like in the world of politics in uh, in Persia, but then when Islam came, um, they stayed yes. there because they established their own businesses, etc. And the Persians still they they uh, they use the Jews uh, for many purposes to be like a connection, a bridge, or connection with Europe. Same as the Christian now, you see the Christians in the Middle East, uh, all Middle Eastern countries who has a Christians. The Muslim countries, it's very important for them that they have a Christians in the Middle East. It's like a, we have a hostage here. If you do something to us, we will take revenge of your Christians. When the, uh, when the Catholic uh, Pope, he said, uh, Muhammad, he brought nothing but evil, uh, the, the, the uh, you know, many Muslims countries, they start burning churches, attacking Christians in the Middle East, uh, in Pakistan, in India, etc. So all of the Christians in the Middle East are a kind of a hostage so they can force let us say their own agenda we have something in our hand belong to you uh, but things are changing uh, things is not like before like no there's no countries now is being just uh, uh, behind walls and gates you know the world is totally different so those days are all over however Muhammad in his time he used the Christians or let us say the Nasara, and he used the Jews for a certain time. But when he did not need them, he decided to kill them, as we see in chapter nine, verse number twenty-nine, where he says, uh, "You know, go and fight those who believe not in the Prophet and his religion." So this is the reason to kill them until they pay jizya, which means Muhammad he won their money. He knew that they are rich; they have money. So if they pay me money, I will not kill them. And this is additional proof that Muhammad is a false prophet because what kind of a prophet he compromise if you are trying to kill all those who don't believe in your God and that is a crime which should not be forgiven well how you let them live if they pay money and wh what is the need of God for money but this is the money will go to Muhammad so Muhammad is a person who always use God for his uh, uh, as a hostage like you know Allah is the puppet of Muhammad Anytime Muhammad he wants something to happen, he say God said to me. The same as he made verses about having sex with women, with no limit. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Now, if we go back to Khadija, Khadija simply is no one. And if the if the Shia they believe that Khadija she was really important, so why they don't uh, show us? Order of Islam call her. Uh, no. Where, where, where is Khadija? Where is Khadija in the heritage of the Shia? We don't see her. We see only Fatima, right? 
Yeah, but, so, but for her, they will actually kill for Fatima. That uh, she just see, like holy. Just because she, she, she has the, Maria. Yeah, just because she is the mother of Fatima, they speak about her highly, and but the fact they don't really care for Khadija, they care for Fatima. Now here, you know, uh, we know that the Shia believe that uh, Fatima and Hassan and Hussein and Ali, uh, uh, they are made of light. And the reason they, for them they believe in that, if you go and read them. That's why all these pictures in Iran, sorry to interrupt you, but they have so many pictures on the side of the ways, in every corner, in every kind of shop. Uh, there is a picture of some saint of sort, and their their light, their faces are drawn in light. Right. Like you can't actually see their face, but they're all, yeah, yeah, so that's exactly how they see them. This is how they see them, yes. They don't, they cover them with light because they are made of light. And actually, yeah, light is yeah, exactly this. Yeah, they are, they are. But even more beautiful, you have these beautiful Persian eyes and everything. But it's very gorgeous faces that you just want to, you know, look at when you see them. Very yeah, different. They draw them, but for than sure, those are, were are, are false. Person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, look for what what they are saying. Muslim or non-Muslims. Imam Ali A A S, who was devoted Muslim, did not consider the state of of uh, one being Muslim. Or not as condition for defending the oppressed. For Imam Ali, it was important to establish justice and uh, uh, and defend the oppressed and be stern toward the uh, the uh, oppressor, whoever the oppressor uh, uh, be. All of this is nothing but a big fat lie. Uh, Ali, he killed, he oh. raped, he stole. Oh, how many? I Ayatollah Khamenei have said yeah, and that. The, okay. And the one who is talking that, about that, about Ali, how good he is, is Al Khomeini, who was killing people for leaving Islam, who was slaughtering people for being uh, uh, gay. You see, the yeah. Shia, the Shia, yeah. the Shia, they have two faces: faces for public and faces for for uh, indoor. So for public, exactly, yeah, uh, in 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 public, they say things which is far away from their belief. But indoor, the, the the story is different. Kill them wherever you find them, slaughter them, etc. Uh, and the Shia, they believe clearly that anyone who leave his religion, kill him. The same as the Sunni, no different. And they do every day. They do that every day. Every day in Iran, you will see some people, they are hanged, either for blasphemy against Ali or Muhammad, or for becoming gay, or if you become becoming Christian. So choose one to be killed. By but, the way, did you know that you're on their side, on their radar? They make your name and everything. <laughs> they have my name? And they, you're on their radar. I've seen it in their sites. Uh, you're on their radar. You, they know you exist. I think you're from the CIA. <laughs> mm, yeah, for sure. Anyone is against Islam. Yeah, they made a video actually in the Iranian TV about me. Uh, this is yeah. many years ago. Yeah, I saw that video. Uh, anyone who exposed, anyway, anyone who exposed their lies, you know he is an enemy for Allah. always. And they're either a spy from from yeah. from Israel let see, or they're from let, let us see the tolerance of of uh, of the Shia. So if I go right now to Iran and I stand in the corner, says Muhammad is a false prophet, what will happen to me? <laughs> you will be imprisoned and you will be uh, accused for they kill me in ins the, insulting they the prophet. Me, they will kill me in the street. They will not even take me to prison. They will cut me pieces. So they say things. You know this is what Shia Shia is about. You see Shia and Sunni, both of them, they practice taqiyya. But uh, Shia, taqiyya for them is a, is a style of yeah. life. Like you, you have to do taqiyya in everything, anything, even with your wife. You know, there's tons of Especially videos. Especially with your wife. They call these people, these akhuns, um, these you know, people, and they, uh, they ask them advice for marriage. And these idiots would actually say, just lie to them. Say you will buy them gold and don't buy them gold and and this is so simplistic as if that will you know solve the issue as if women just want one thing they want gold and they're stupid and dumb enough to just want that and the other thing that is they say zatzan that it's in in her in her thing she's made of it is jealousy and she will make everything like she will break everything with her jealousy because jealous women go to hell i mean like i hate them i hate them for all these lies but go on sorry well, the, the Shia, uh, actually, they don't respect women at all. Uh, way, at all. Way, way more than the Sunni. The Sunni don't respect women too. But, uh, like, you know, if you go to the books of the Shia, as, as an example, if you book to go to the book of Al, uh, Al-Kafi, which is, like, equal to Al-Bukhari for the Muslim Sunni, in value number five, page number 500, let me, hold on, I don't want to give a wrong number. 
uh, don't exact remember exactly, but it was five hundred something. Yeah, uh, page number five five ten. Okay. Okay, I just open it. So, uh, the Shia. This is Shia. This is not Sunni. So Shia cannot complain. Uh, the Shia they believe that women. When women she get older, she lose the best of her good. She have two two part. She have two part of her. Uh, one part is for evil, and one part is for her beauty. Uh, and when she uh, let me translate in English, I will use Google translation here. Let us see. So Iranians actually have the exact alphabet. We have the Arabian alphabet, and an Iranian would just slap me in the face for saying that because they say no, that's Farsi, and it's no, a different yeah, language. Uh, I know it's a pronunciation. They, they use the they Arabic language sing, just uh, because they've been forced to. They are not really in favor of it. Uh, here you see the yeah. Messenger of Allah said. Uh, well, let us see what happened to the translation here. That there is the women when she get older. Okay, he said if a woman grow up in age, uh, the both uh, end of uh, uh, of of the better side goes, and her evil remain. I don't know if you can see uh, the text. Can you scroll up a bit? So if you are a woman and she like you are, uh, and the, the, who is an old woman here? An old woman is not an really an old woman. Old woman. Who he can she cannot have babies, and she is not pretty as when she was young. So that the good part about the women, and the rest is not is a pure evil. So women in for the Shia, after her menopause, huh? After her menopause, if, after yeah, after she she don't have uh, menstruation no more. So what is the use of the menopause? Women? Yeah, what is the use of the women? Nothing, because she cannot have babies. Not and she is not to be motherhood. Motherhood so, is the only thing in, in Islam that has some sort of respect. So, from women, you up, you're upgraded when you're a woman. Uh, sorry, when you're a mom, and then you actually get to dictate what your son does and everything. It is a whole uh, sect in itself. But as exactly as you say, women are just sex objects. You just you marry your you position your yeah, sex but, object. But remember, That's what women re are. Remember, they said yeah. they said to you before that they respect too much Khadija, correct? Yeah. Okay. Well, Khadija now she become older. So what is remain of her when she's old? Her evil part, right? That's what it says. So this, wow. is, this, is, this is how they lie, you know, they, they, they uh, you know, Shia is wow. like, uh, is a collection of uh, Tom oh and Jerry God. stories. That is so inhuman to make a woman who's older turn her into the evil part. So you actually have an excuse to, you know, the, the Jews have 600, uh, in the time of Jesus, they had 600 reasons for uh, divorcing a wife, which with salty food would be one of them, the requirement. And this is actually even more evil than that. It's the same. It's the same in a sense, in the same spirit. You know, this Pharisee kind of way of living. You can do whatever you want, and then you can put it on a woman. You can project it on a woman. But this is even more evil because you're saying a woman who has done everything for you, and now she's older. She's in a menopause, and she's most probably the mom of several kids. Instead of thanking her, instead of being loyal to her, now you're making her turning her into the black sheep, and you're saying you're able to to do evil upon her this is how as evil as it gets no here actually this is more more than this uh, the, the issue here that islam shia and sunni both of them they look at the women as nothing excuse my language nothing but a private part so for them she is just a sex toy and you give babies so this is a sex machine she give babies for us so this is the benefit of her we enjoy her in bed and then give us babies so if if she don't have the beauty and she don't have the basis, so what is left? So what the Muslim Shia and the Muslim Sunni agree that she is nothing but an evil sex machine. <laughs> and if she if she lost her beauty and she cannot have babies, so what remain the evil because this is what she is. 
So there's nothing, nothing, oh. nothing good. Oh. There's nothing good on the women. So this is how they lie when they say, "Okay, we respect Khadija." Well, Khadija, she was an old woman already. Actually, the Shia they say she, that the uh, Khadija was she was the master, the master of, of Muhammad because I think she, I think he was her sex toy. And I think she was so rich and so influential. If he would come with these ayahs, with these surahs, he would be beheaded by her. But yeah, okay. When she died, he came all with all these revelations, new yeah, revelations you know, uh, about uh, uh, what a woman is in her older years. Muhammad, he married Khadija, she cannot have kids. So the Shia, when they say Fatima, she was the child of Khadija, this is a big fat lie. Uh, wow. Yeah, because Muhammad have no children. Those are the children of Khadija. Uh, you know, if you think about it, Muhammad, he have a child from Khadija. Okay, he married 13 women and he slept with tons of slaves after that. He could not make one of them have baby, you know. So, Muhammad, they, had said no they all died. That's that they no, say no, they no, all no. died. None of them age. died. The, the uh, Maria, the cop, she got a get a uh, a from her cousin, you know, or, or from people sleeping around because she's a slave, you know, she's you have no control of her. So, and uh, even Aisha, she said to him many times that this is not your son, he don't even look close to you. Uh, but Muhammad oh. desperately he was looking to have a son, but he could not. Now, can you uh, do you have this? Uh, do you have something to show me for that? For like for the audience uh, about the sons of uh, Muhammad? Well, the Quran, the Quran, yeah. the, the clear proof. The Quran says that uh, uh, the one who accused you that you don't have, uh, you know, you cannot have babies. He is the one he cannot have babies. Chapter of Al Kawthar, chapter one eight, verse number. One, two, three. I mean, I mean, it's funny to call even this one is chapter. Look, it's just a few words. All of it is about Muhammad. He don't have a private part. A man, he said to him, "You don't have a private part." Allah, he get involved, and he said to Muhammad, "Don't worry, be happy. We give you Al Kawthar. If we go and check Al Kawthar, we will find Al Kawthar is a river which is very white and sweet like milk." What is the relationship between a guy accusing me of not having a private part? Or it's my private part doesn't function to promise me with a river which is sweet white like milk this is a sperm and then he says because the, the sperm of Muhammad he have to be sweet because he is a sweet the sweetest ever then therefore uh, uh, praise Allah for and uh, sacrifice for him sacrifice for what what happened exactly because he gave him a river in the heaven what about you make him now having sex and have babies and then and the one who make uh, who make you angry Muhammad actually he is not making him angry he is making fun of him he is down downgrading Muhammad he's insulting Muhammad uh, he will be cut off okay cut off from what cut off from what he will be cut off from having babies change the translation right away you will, you will find the, tra the translators uh, this is why we say uh, never trust a Muslim translation never they lie we change the translation hmm. look there it says from the hereafter here it says from having children do you see it so the whole story so people are making fun of someone who is obsessed with himself because he had this 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 defect and man for men it is uh, you are money you know that this Absolutely. is very yeah. important to a man so he like okay that was that's huge to know i never knew this no, i think this many men don't muhammad, know this. this is why muhammad he says i was the most weak person between all mankind in sex and then I invoke my God. He was Allah. lying about his sex all through this, the you know, to, through the Quran and the Hadith. Well, That's he, also a reason. No it. normal person, normal yeah. person brags about their you know private life, right? He brag, no moral person. No, he, he brag about it because he's trying to cover something he believe Office. it's missing. You know, That's why he brag. And uh, Muhammad, he said that I was the most weak person between all mankind in sex until Allah I invoke Allah and He sent me a, sent me a dish of meat. Al Kufayt, I ate it. I get the power of forty men. So, uh, so even this miracle is very funny. I mean, if, uh, the Muslim they say, if Allah wants something to be, He say be. But Allah could not fix the private part of Muhammad, so He need to go to the kitchen and make shish kebab, and He send it to Muhammad, and Muhammad ate it, and then Muhammad then boing, he, he's 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 good to go. Uh, all of Islam is like shish kebab. Yeah, it's, Islam is a collection of st stupid story. Additional to that, oh. the Muslims, because this is your interest about women. The Muslims, Shia and Sunni, both of them, they believe that uh, women, she is created for sex. If you, there's a book, it's called Al Khisal uh, uh, by a Shaykh Al Khisal, Al Khisal. So uh, this is Shia book, not Shia, not Sunni. Uh, and by the way, Sunni, they agree with that too. 
so there's a hadith where it says that uh, Allah gave the women a ten part of a sexual desire one of it only for the man so the man have only one sexual desire or let us say uh, joy when he have sex the women she have ten and then uh, and uh, and then he says but because Allah he made the women shy to say her desire she don't say it so they they always they view the women actually let me let me find it for you always they view the women as a sexual uh, uh, entertain entertainment okay. but also someone who there doesn't have control right yeah the women Allah mm -hmm. Allah Allah he made her in such a way so he says um, let us translate to English hold on so people can read oh, I don't know what happened we say translate it took us to something else let us check mm -hmm. yeah I have a million questions so sorry for keeping you from your topic yeah no problem it's okay all right here we go we switch to English so look what it says here this is the book of Al Khisal page number 438 uh, here it says in the authority etc etc it says uh, Allah made uh, yeah, the translation is not good uh, the women sexual desire ten time when she have sex she have ten sexual desire and one only for the man but because Allah he, he forced modesty in the women so she cover uh, her desire you know she don't she don't talk about it <laughs> all right yeah oh, okay so this is what they this is how they view always the women and this is why Muhammad he brag about his sexual desire but no women she brag about it, his sexual it, desire Allah has made love ten parts what does it even mean nine of them in women and one of them in men it's what, just so he gave the poorly women, written. he gave the women uh, this is why Muhammad he says the women she have ten private part, ten private part. One of them is her private Does part, the one between her legs. The rest are her hair, her voice, her eyes. All of the uh, women she is all is a private That's part. That's why she have to cover up all these parts. Yeah, right? because this is uh, when she get married she cover only one, and the rest is still exposed. So she have to wear the burqa. You know, when you, when a woman she marry, only the private part between her legs is the one is covered. Uh, 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 and then the Muslims actually the Shia they they go farther this is why I have my book sex and Allah you people can read it the Shia they they exaggerate and they speak about uh, they are obsessed with sexuality you know, obviously so this they, they claim that the women because uh, they are Imams they told them that uh, uh, women she have ten uh, sexual desire and if the women she got horny she can really do what 10 men cannot do all right so uh, uh let me let me find this oh i'm okay, listening i'm reading some of the some of the comments some of them are really rude i don't know who this person is rad prophet but it's really rude some of the comments i'm not looking at the comment let me see <laughs> they obviously are all of them are over six and everything they think about is sex well, obviously is, is gone. these he kind is, of people. Is history no problem don't worry about them don't look at the comments uh, here you will see uh, it says here Amir al Mu'minina okay uh, here look look what uh, what Amir al Mu'minin this is this is Ali Ali speaking to Al Hassan this is not someone else they say to you that we respect uh, Khadija okay 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 so Ali saying to Hassan Al Hassan his son never take an opinion of a woman because their opinion will take you to to be destroyed and will will take you will make you weak never take their opinion and then you wow. have, you have to cover them 
you have to cover them from all uh, eyes which means nobody can see them by wearing the hijab and the more hijab you put the better for them which means the more you cover them the better for them uh, and then he says and they should they should not allow anyone to enter upon them or to get out and never trust them never trust them uh, if you can do that they will never know a man except you wow you know so this is this is what Ali this is not anyone this is yeah, Ali utter insult to women at very like hard I mean like it's just so aggressive this this is just like wow yeah that's and yeah. it is exactly what the culture is this is backed up by the culture the way they yeah. speak to women the way they treat women the, day, the, the things they teach their sons about their future wives which is so so weird because there's themselves they're women who teach their sons these nonsense mm. oh, wow you see we, tr we, we tr uh, try to translate in google translation it's coming close but it's not really accurate so he is warning uh, hassan ali is warning hassan uh, never never take a consult with women uh, because <laughs> their opinion will destroy you and will make you weak and they have to cover always to be covered and they should not know any man except you and this is the only way to make them know only one man which is you you know and oh, because they're so crazy they can't even control themselves and they're just like these demonic people who just want sex right no the the reason you see the reason is to say such a thing like if if you cannot see any man except a, a, a one person then you will not see how bad he is if you cannot compare him to other men you know what i mean i mean he will be good anyway i mean okay um, your husband is evil maybe but if you cannot compare him to something better how you will know that the other one is better so the advice is don't let your wife see someone else so she will never recognize something better than you and she will never know a person except wow. you. Yeah. Yeah, put her inside uh, put her inside her burqa and then she will never see anyone except you so but female mutilation and everything that comes from it is all from the, this 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 idea that we have these ten parts and all we do is think and we are just uncontrolled because loads of us come actually according to what have understood from what you tell people is we, some of us are even made from you know kind of like some demonic being or come from hell or whatnot and just like we are just like creatures less than what we are in actuality so we have to be controlled we have to be uh, you know uh treated this way and we are seen for something that we are not and and in the whole society is it, the whole society in iran and the biggest society i think problems between this uh, islamic society is this whole obsession with sex which you well, see you know, left and right everywhere because islam is a sexual cult everything in islam is based yeah. on sex so this is why we cannot really uh we cannot be surprised why they are obsessed with sex uh, let us if we go and see try to, to find what the sunni like the shia now they said 10 uh, she have 10 uh, desire uh, the sunni the, the muhammad he said according to the sunni she have 99 desire and actually some shia agree with that so the women she have 99 desire let me see if i can find it oh god yeah the women she have 99 desire um and hmm. that's why they call us jodugyar they call us all these afsungyar and persian people who listen to this they know what these terms mean we are some kind of a beings we can be rich man that's how they think of women who are very sexy and stuff yeah um i'm trying to find you the hadith about the women she have 99 sexual joy and here you notice Muhammad how much expert he is and how 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 many the women how many sexual joy they she have this guy he have a degree and he study women carefully uh, let us see this one okay let us see here <clears throat> um let us see someone says i have butterflies on my screen what should i do i think you should refresh your uh, your page uh, i'm not showing the screen right now so don't worry i did not show the screen i'm looking for the reference 
you know, like a, a no, I think someone's screen just froze and they didn't know what to do, so I just oh, gave okay. answer. Yeah. Uh, you see, like if you if you talk to a different person, he will take him a year to find reference. We are talking about I mean, for me because I memorize it in my head. Uh, I'm trying to find. Uh, you know, You're the king. Well, I do my best uh, to see. I no, I've never I seen found... someone like you destroy Islam the way you do utterly destroying it. Well, Islam is very easy to destroy anyway. I mean, it's a stupid cult. No, you're, you're just too humble. It's not that easy. You're destroying it. But, but everything that God gave to you, of course, it's, you know, God gave all the grace, but it's just amazing. But go on. Let us see here. But this one is a, is a, is a Google book. We can translate to Google, to English. We need something which is can be translated. Um, Well, look so like people, we, we have no choice. To be, we have to uh, show. Me being a Muslim, they think I'm not, I'm not a real Muslim. For people who didn't understand or get the intro, I was born like a child Muslim. So I, I didn't even know what life was at the age of seven. When we left Iran, I was eight. So I've never been practicing Islam in that sense. I was a cultural child put in a situation, in an Islamic situation. I wasn't even brought up as a Muslim. Mm. But... Uh, in Iran, it doesn't matter if you go back, if you have problems with the state or whatnot, and you have to go in court and testify. Yeah, they sure. ask you, what do you, what, what are you, Shia or Sunni? No, they, you can't, they, you don't have a choice between they, they are even Muslim Shia and Sunni. Yeah, even if you're Shia. Islam, you are Muslim there, you cannot change it. You cannot even say, I'm not a Muslim no more. Here, this is the book yeah, of they, Faidul Qadir. you more times if you do that, but you go on, sorry. This, this is the book of Faidul Qadir. This is Sunni book yeah. now. And in the Sunni book, it says, فضلت المرأة على الرجل بتسع وتسعين جزءا من اللذة. The women she been favored by. Is it on the screen? Because oh, I so, can't sorry. see anything. Hold on, let me let me. I I, I did not put it on the screen. Let me see. Yes, I'm Christian now. <laughs> All right, now we will be back. This is the book of Faidul Qadir, and we are in page number four hundred forty. Yeah. And those who are Muslims, they speak Arabic, they can see what we are talking about. This is 440. And this is hadith number 5888. It says, The women she been favored over the man by 99, uh, 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 like uh, joy, sexual joy. And this is reported from Abu Huraira. Now, this is Sunni, you know. Shia, they say ten. Sunni, they say ninety-nine. So choose one. Can you can you recite that in Arabic? Is that possible? Yeah, فضلت المرأة على الرجل بتسعة وتسعين جزءا من من اللذة. ولكن الله ألقى عليهن الحياة. But Allah He made them shy, or let us say um, uh, He put modesty on them, so they don't like talk about it. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you know. Uh, both both cult uh, Shia or Sunni, they are uh, sexual cults. Islam, all of it is based on. Why? What, what if you? What is the reward of a man if he convert to Islam? It's sex. You know, eternal sex. That is not just this so, yeah, life, it's, but it's, it's, no, it's, in I mean, it's heaven. There about is, sex. you know, there is about sex. sex mansion. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Shia and Sunni, this actually, I mean, there's like, nothing for the woman, right? Even even heaven is not designed equally for women and for men. It's designed. I mean, like I know these uh, these contemporary so-called scholars try to say that that is both for women and for men, but classically orthodox Islam doesn't teach that. It actually says even the heaven is not for us women, right? The hell is for us, but the heaven is for the, again bring men in sex. The, uh, actually, wow. Muhammad he said it clearly that the majority of women they are going to go to hell. So, and the reason for that because they have their period, and this is the major reason, which make them oh, wow. which make make them not equal to the men because they have their period, so they are not equal to the men. Uh, this is the hadith of Muhammad. He was saying, "Oh, women folk, you should give it charity and be diligent." In seeking Allah and forgiveness, because I have seen 
which means the way he went uh, when he went to heaven he saw that there was of, of hell uh, a fire are women amongst a uh, women amongst them the majority they are uh, they, they are women and Muhammad he asked them they are to give donation so like so Allah will forgive them this is the whole point he's scaring the women and the women they Wait, start. just just for a second I need a second here so just imagine I is and this is something I just remember from my childhood just just imagine for a second teaching little girls who who for the first time come to know who they are you know who they are in in, in the presence of the Almighty God and they they are you know, this is drilled into their beings that, you know, they are less worth, they have less worth. It's just insanity what that does to a society. Yeah. Sorry, well, just go on. It's a, you know, the concept of this cult, it is, you believe in Muhammad, we give you sex, and we give you money. Uh, that's the whole, uh, this is the whole Islam, to, to summarize it. You will be 10 times rich than any king in heaven, which is funny because heaven is supposed to is for free, so what I would do with the money? But Muhammad, he said, in the in the heaven, there is a market where you can spend your money. And in the market, there's images of men and women. And if you like an image, you can pay and have sex with that image. Uh, and this is the whole uh, this is the whole idea, you know, of uh, of of Islam. You know, what all what you need, what is the reward? If I go right now and I join Hezbollah or ISIS or Al Qaeda, what Allah will give me? Uh, sex. That's it. Right, and of, sex, uh, endless yeah. sex, Not, yeah. You see, oh, whatever your right hand possesses, right, that means endless. Actually, like you see, when we say 70, 70 women, the 70 women, let us say 72 women, this is the lowest. Every woman, she have a 70 wasifa, wasifa, which means maid. And every wasifa, she have another 70 maid. So what is the total? You, you have thousands. This is for the lowest Muslim. For the mm. lowest, yeah. For uh, uh, for each one of them, she have seventy, and the seventy have seventy. Muhammad is stuck with the number seventy. So uh, uh, the whole cult is about sex, and always this cult put down the women. As you see, women when she get older, the good part of her is gone, which is babies and sex, and then the bad part is the remain, which is evil. This is why Muhammad he claimed. <laughs> Just machines, we just give you babies and then you yeah. get the cause demonic. Muhammad that's, he said, that's what he, he said, uh, You see, the, the Muslim they say the Christians are funny when they claim that they believe in the original sin, right? This is what they say. But look what Muhammad he said, the prophet, and not only that, I saw it like did that and etc. They say the Christian they blame uh, Eve in the Bible for the sin of Adam. That's not a true God, he punished them both, he did not blame one. Same time, uh. The one who commits sin, he commits sin. Doesn't matter who is he, male or female. But look here what Muhammad said. The Prophet said, where it is not for Bani Israel, which means the children of Israel, meat would not decay. Muhammad blamed even the Jews for the food is damaged in your table. And then he says, and where it is not for Eve, no woman would ever betray her husband. So Muhammad teaching the Muslims that all women are the same as Eve. And if she was a bad woman, she betrayed her husband. And actually, <laughs> he used the word in Arabic, Khanat, Khanat, the one who cheats. But this is their pride and joy. They always, I see these modern scholars defending this notion, saying, well, you Christians, you believe that Eve was the one who actually, uh, you know, uh, deceived Adam. But we Muslims, we don't believe that. We, we believe that Eve and, and, and <clears throat> Adam were, Adam and Eve were equally sinners. But this is so not true then, what you're saying yeah, is well, everything proving say, the opposite. You see, Muslims, when they say things to you, they, 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 uh, they bit in your... But this is actually the opposite of from the truth. Why would they do that? If they're proud of their what they... Like, if you and I would speak about the Bible, both... I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm really proud even about the Mosaic law. I'm like, wow, that's so just, that's so good, that's so holy. I don't have to hide it, but this is so. This is also a proof that they're even ashamed of what is said here. They try to change it. Muslims, they play taqiyya, as we said. So when they say we don't believe in that, we go and we check, we find that they redo, they rule, we believe in that. But the, the Muslims always debate in one thing, that you are ignorant, you do not know. And as long as you are ignorant, we can lie and we can say, why well, you believe in that, you know? And because you don't know, you don't know how to answer them. Like, uh, can a Muslim say to me what they just said to you? They cannot, you know? So this is why here we are trying to fight ignorance. Ignorance is the problem.
Do you hear me? Yeah, I, I hear you. Yeah. So uh, this is why uh, Christians, when they listen to us, they need to take notes, uh, save reference, because those things, the same as they say to you, they will say to them. And if you are not a person with education, you do not know what to say, and they shut you up. No. Yeah. But here, uh, yeah, actually, here, here you notice. It's not Muhammad. even possible. It's not even possible. I think, in a theological way, in Islam, to critique Islam, right? You have no right to do that. Even as a man, not only you as a woman. You don't have right but, for what? I don't understand what? You don't have right to do what? So I thought I thought this was some kind of a theology, Islamic theology, that there is no position, no one can, can take a pr critical position. I mean, like what Molavi did in Iran, uh, he actually, he, I think he was the grandson of uh, of Ali. This is how, how, how I have uh, perceived it to be true. And uh, he came with, uh, you know, all sorts of uh, out objections against the orthodox kind of islam and he was seen as an uh he was seen as someone who you know is not a is a mortad he's not a muslim anymore because so whatever you someone poses something uh even within uh, some kind of a uh, understanding of islam but difference from idea that that person is seen as whether man or woman as seen as mortad so i think it's the, the this is a theological thing that you're not you, no one is uh, able or uh, no one ought to critique Islam in a Islamic format right or is that just for women you see this is not about uh, a mullah not about a Muslim not about this is what the cult is about the cult is made by the man for the man so whoever is reading the cult studying the cult he had to understand that that this is a religion made for the benefit of the man and the woman she is it's just a sex toy so no matter mm -hmm. who is the one is talking, no matter who is the one is reading, no matter who is the one is listening, this is the concept, and this is the the, the the benefit, and this is the target. The target is you believe in Muhammad, you go to heaven, you have sex. Women are made for the man for sex. Mm -hmm. And in the yeah. heaven, those women, Allah will even take from them their jealousy, which means you will become a sex toy. You have no feeling. So your husband, he can sleep. So around. can I ask you something about mm -hmm. this jealousy? So in they they always drill us women in Iran. Jealousy, jealousy is such a bad thing. You have to control it because real women actually accept the second woman stuff like that. They want to, you know, really drink that. But so what does qayrat mean? Like do you qayrat? When you actually yeah yeah rira is a jealousy. No, well qayrat is jealousy. Yeah. The Gira, Gira is... Okay, so I thought Qayrat means what well, we believe in, in, in the Christianity to be zeal for God, righteous uh, righteous jealousy, what God has for us. Yeah, jealousy Does have many Islam meaning. have a... Jealousy have many meanings. The Binti are jealous about what? A woman, she can be jealous uh, from her husband. You know, he's talking to some woman. Uh, so, so, but I, I mean, like, when the man is actually becoming Qayrati over the woman, that's seen as some kind of a, you know... Um, uh, good thing to have that is it's it, it looks good at a man but when a woman is getting jealous because righteously her man is looking at a one other woman or is he, he wants other women he is thinking about other women we are called jealous for being for feeling that it's so it's so unfair you know that the whole thing is so the utterly jealousy, unfair uh, the concept of jealousy is about owning something so since we are children when we are children if i have a toy and I am a child, and then another kid, he come and he play with it. I suddenly, I remember that this is my toy. So I want to take it from him. And maybe I will cry, or even I will beat him to take it back. So jealousy is, 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 a, is, a, is, a, is the desire to own, not a desire. It's not really a good desire. It's, it's, a, it's about owning the person or owning something. So some people, when they um, marry a man or a woman, when they marry from somebody, uh, we say they say they are very jealous. Why? Because they believe they own you. You belong to them. So you cannot even talk to someone else. You cannot even have a freedom to say hello to someone. If you look somewhere, he will accuse you with something. That is a sign of obsession, of ownership, and not love. This is not love. This is this is ownership. So Muhammad, when he said that yeah. the women in the heaven, Allah will take their jealousy. Uh, he is trying to solve the problem because the Muslim men they have many women and they keep fighting and even Muhammad himself his wives 
where two parties and they fight each other even they throw rocks at each other so uh, 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 this problem you know anyone who have many but was that because of Muhammad I mean like I can't even imagine someone loving him I think well I don't know if you have ever read this book that is Iranian lady they are not loving him they are fighting over property you see, if, oh, you, if you go exactly, that's what I want to say because he's so unlovable. So she, she they can't be fighting over him. So they're fighting no. about poverty. That that makes sense. Yeah, uh, you know, if you read the hadith, the fight is about uh, bintu Abi Quhafa, which means Aisha. She was yeah. uh, uh, when when the prophet uh, uh, the prophet became like a king, right? So he's a king. And uh, he received gifts, bribe. If if you want something from the Prophet, you want him to do it to you. You give him give him money, and he made verses about it in the Quran. So Aisha, she is in control. Aisha, we say she is young, she is a child, but she is evil, obviously, and she is taking advantage of this old man, who and now he is obsessed with her her over the other woman because she is the child, young, uh, a wife. So he enjoys sex with her. And obviously now she is getting older. She is maybe uh, 14 and maybe her mother is teaching her, you know, obviously there's somebody teaching her. So Aisha, she made all the people when they receive gifts, they have to bring the gifts to her house. So what people do, if Muhammad visiting different wife, they don't bring gifts. They wait until it is in the house of Aisha. Why? Okay. Because Aisha, she have influence. Maybe she sit in his lap and do some belly dancing, etc. And she said, "Do this guy. He sent us a gift. He's nice, etc." So she convinced him to agree. So people they learned that if they send their gift to the house of Aisha, what they want to happen, the bribe will function. If they send their she's gift, she's in the bottle. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a fighting about not not about Muhammad. You know, the hate in front of us. Should be telling the story. And they came to him, even they sent his daughter, supposed to Fatima, asking him to be equitable, you know, regarding the the, the, the matter of uh, uh, daughter of Abu Quhafa, which means Abu Bakr. And Muhammad, you know, refused, you know, he says, um, you know, uh, you know, refused to accept what they are asking him for, to be equitable, which means to be justice. And this is the this is a clear proof that Muhammad himself was not justice, even the money. So Aisha, she got all the this, gifts. This is one of the laws they they brag about about. Um, so they always say men uh, they have the ability to to marry other wives, but the first wife should actually totally agree, and she no, should false. give consent no, and false. everything. There's nowhere that's anyone false. he's saying that women she have to agree. He's a big fat liar. Let us show us the reference where he got us from. That's a big fat lie. That is a big oh, fat wow. lie. Yeah. So that's 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 something they want to. And there is no um, women. You know, there is no woman would agree. I mean, it might be really uh, uh, occasion like somebody. Uh, he cannot have kids. His wife. She know that he is. He's a nice guy. He's a good for her, and he don't want to marry anyone. Uh, but he want to have a kid. So she said, you know what? Okay, marry some other woman. Maybe because she think it's her. Who cannot give him a baby but this is real there's no women she like to share her husband with others and we're in the Muslims when they get this that a man he can uh, he in order to have a second or third wife actually the Quran never said marry one woman the Quran says go if which means have sex have sex with a woman and a two and a three and four. But so is this is this also how Arab people actually really understand it, or are they as ignorant as we have been? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, they understand uh, it very. Are, well. they, they, are, you see, there is we said there is something for public for uh, people who speak English, and there is people for uh, indoor. There is nobody believing. How do you say in Arabic? Sorry. Can you say how can you repeat that in Arabic? How you actually say there's something for indoors and something for outdoors? You know, uh, and inside the inside teaching, when the, when the Muslim they close the door of the mosque and the windows in Europe, they start talking about uh, the kuffar, how filthy they are, we have to do jihad, etc. When a foreigner he come, he open the door, he says Islam teach peace, we love mercy, and we know Islam says to us to respect uh, others. In the house of peace and dava, that, that's just, that, that's what you're referring to, right? This is no, this is this is called taqiyya. 
This is the taqiyya. Yeah, I mean, but in the house of peace with Muslims, you don't lie and you are being uh, whatever sensei. But when you go outside, outside the door of Islam, you can actually, you know, do taqiyya and lie no, for Islam. Lie. Or you, is it also for with Muslims? No, you can, you can also you, lie to Muslims. You can lie inside Islam because the Prophet said you can lie in three really? cases. Yes, you can lie to your, your wife, your family, your friends and your enemy. So who's left? You know, nobody. This is, this is not in the <laughs> who dark. Who is left? Yeah, who is left? Nobody. But if you go to the chapter 3, number 28, which is the taqiyya is coming from, you will see that it teaches clearly that a Muslim man, he uh, should, uh, when he speaks to, for sure, this is when he was weak. As you say, the the the, the country which is not his, he, he didn't have control over it. So here he says, it says it's forbidden for the believer to take the hypocrite and supposedly we are the hypocrite to be uh, their friends however and the one who is sincere to take them as honorable friends if he is sincere seeking honor and might and, uh, and honor with them by taking the hypocrites and disbelievers as a friend both he ha has has no connection with Allah so the second you take me as a friend and you mean it and you are sincere about that as a Muslim that's mean you are not a Muslim no more you're apostate so he have no protection, no connection, no honor, no mercy. So the Muslims can kill you, rape your wife, take your money, unless, unless this is the, this is the exception. So I thought uh, that there's an exception. Hold on. The exception is if if you want to take them as a friend, but you don't mean it, it's okay. So look what it says. Unless to be, but you guard yourself against them, save yourself from them, taking it as it were security. Saving yourself from them by speaking <laughs> in a friendly way toward them while your heart is like this. So your heart always should be the very like definition of how to be a hypocrite. This is just that is exactly Islam. that. Islam is about hypocrisy. It's satanic, you know. It is totally satanic. So he can not take you as a friend. But if you go in the West in America, you will see every Muslim saying to someone who is not Muslim, you know, we're friends. You know, and they invite you to their house, etc., in order to maybe to deceive you and make you believe in Islam. But as you see, this is the teaching of Islam. This is not my quotation. This is not my words. This is Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad himself. This is not me saying that. This is, and this is, by the way, the official government well, website how, of the King he, of How Germany. is he a cousin, by the way? We don't know anything about Muhammad's father. Even how can he be well, this a what cousin? They say, they say that this is his cousin. His name is Ibn Abbas, and you know, whatever they say, we go with it. No problem. Okay. Yeah, but this is what uh, what this cult is about. It's about deception and lies. And uh, you specifically, most of the things you said tonight was about Shia Islam. Someone, uh, Almir, I think she's I Iranian. She's uh, complaining about uh, deriving for, from the topic, but it's all between Shia. This is all Shia Islam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, um, can I ask a different question also about uh, sure. uh, about Shia? Go ahead. Uh, so, can you tell me more about the character of both Hassan and Hossein? Because that in Iran, uh, Hossein is praised actually as a maybe because I think um, Muhammad, as you said, is hammed by by Ubad, like the one who is being praised, right? So he could be anyone. Hmm. Uh, it's very vague for me all these names, but uh, but Hossein is actually it almost for some people it's an incarnation of who Muhammad was. So they in actuality, either praise uh, some people praise Ali and some people praise Hussein. Not so much Muhammad, though. We I've never yeah they they say like you know Salavat bar uh, Muhammad or all Muhammad and stuff like that. But uh, praise be upon Muhammad and his followers and his family. But uh, like it's still really vague for me. Do you have more information, cultural information like you, and background context about who Hassan and Hossein were and their lives? And, and, and do you know something about this this uh, epic fight that he had and he brought his son into that fight and you know what happened well, to him, uh, which made him shy? There's many, uh, there's many uh, stories. All of it, obviously, it's a fabricated stories. Uh, as an example, Ali himself, he was not born in a normal birth. His mother, she gave birth to him in the Kaaba. This is Shia <laughs> stories, you know. This is Shia stories, and there's no really, there's no source for it. I mean, Shia they have tons and millions of stories. So, uh, uh, you know, he is the only one who was born in the Kaaba. 
uh, you know some sign of a Jesus figure in, in, in actuality yeah they have they have like a lot of uh, stories uh, about Ali and about uh, Al Hussein and Hassan uh, like as an example when uh, uh, Fatima First of all, what they um, for, sorry to, uh, to to say this, but first of all, what does it mean, Hassan and Hossein? Can you explain what the names mean? Hassan mean uh, uh, good, like good and yeah. uh, uh, good and good. <laughs> Hassan and Hossein is the same actually. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Both, yeah, both are like good. the good and the good. You know, so Hassan the and Hossein, one. like the one is uh, is good and the one is uh, 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 the source of good, or let us say. Uh, um it's uh, it's about being good you know it's not really too right. much different but the mm -hmm. it's not in here that not a problem the problem is that the shia they believe that al hassan al hussein they are created from light and ali now they don't mention muhammad too much because simply muhammad is just a cover up you see the shia don't really care for muhammad they care really for no. ali and his family but saying, yeah. Muhammad is a cover-up to make themselves look like still we are a Muslim, you know. So the Shia they believe, and they have their own interpretation for everything. So they say that the Quran says that Allah said that Muhammad he is a light, he's a lamp. All right. And the, yeah. from this interpretation, they say all the family of Muhammad they are made of light. They are uh, 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 creatures made of light. They are not human like us. There is many. Mm -hmm. uh, there is many videos in the internet actually uh, speaking about uh, this issue that they are really made of light. They are not human like us. They've been given shape of a human, but they are not. Uh, they are not a human. They have the look of a human, you know. Um, and then they involve Al Hassan Al Hussein that they are the one who can take you to heaven. Um, as an example, let me see if I can find some stories about them. Um, Yeah, as an example, here there's a story uh, that Al uh, Hussein once he want he wash or he wished to have a grape. Hmm? He wished yeah. to have a grape. So what he did, uh, uh, he hit the ground with the uh, 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 like with something, and then uh, different story says he hit like the column of the tent or the column of the house. And then right away from the ground came a grape and banana, and he, oh, okay. he did feed him. But I need to find uh, the reference to see because we don't like to sh say something without uh, showing a reference. Let us see here. All right. So all of those stories are just to make them gods. They are gods in this earth. They are not a human. Yeah. Uh, okay, here the chapter name is Itiyanahu alayhi salam ala inaba wal mawza fi ghiri awanahuma. Giving him, peace upon him, grape and banana, not in the time, which means not in the season. If we translate this to Google, uh, in Google, let's see, maybe Google will work. Let's hope. Okay. Uh, giving him the grapes and the banana in none. Uh, season time so what it says here um, that when the son of Ali uh, this a desire he have a great desire for a grape but it's not in the time of the grape he hit his hand with the with the pillar and then uh, from the ground brought down from the ground the grape and banana and he feed him you know 
So I was mimicking um, uh, Musa in a sense, but in a different way. He he hit a stick on the ground, and then you know things happened. But they hit the stick on the ground, and fruits and like grapes come out and banana. Yeah, they have they have many 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 tons of stories. All of them they are funny, and you know who they are even to question to say this is stupid. You know nobody there, nobody would dare even for a second to say uh, this is uh, this is a crazy. So you have to agree and you have to say this is true, otherwise they will kill you. No? So Al Hassan Al Hussein is simply they are they are inherited their glory from being born of Ali, and it, they are being born from Ali and Al Fatima, that make them, uh, you know, made of light too. So all of them they are made of light, and then the Shia. This is a very dangerous teaching because when they say they, in Iran they have a word I think it's an Arabic word, but it says zod. I don't know. Have you ever heard that zot? I'm not sure what does that mean. I don't think it's an so It's like your your um, intrinsic um, inherent thing that you're born with. You're you're born with some. It's it, they believe first of all in fatalism, but this thing that they easily when when you're in a crowd of Iranians and there's some gathering of people, uh, people easily go, oh that person. Zotish Haraba, which is like that person, they, they have a bad soul. I think this is very, when you explain that they believe in some are actually made from light, some are made from fire, some are from this place, some are from that place. So all around the world, because their whole genesis is, is so shattered. So I'm they don't sure have a the really word, the word good concept. Saying, but uh, what I know, um, uh, the Shia, they don't believe in them to be human. Um, let, let me see here. Uh, Muhammad he said and Ali agree that Al Hussein Al Hussein yeah. is the is the lamp of guidance. Let us see here. Okay. Hold on a second. He is the lamp of guidance. No, I mean like do is it is it so that uh, in Islam they believe per, some people are not made from a good substance, they're not godly and yeah, some yeah, people they, are. because it's about faith. Uh, well, Muslim they believe in faith and you are made already from what faith. you are made of. Yeah. Yeah, you are yeah. made to go to hell or etc. So if we translate this into Google translation, you will see that those people they don't really believe that they are a human. Uh, Hassan and Al Hussein, etc. It says, I enter the message of Allah, uh, and I have etc. You know, and say to me, Message of Allah will come to you. And he said that Al Hussein is uh, he is the most Beautiful thing in the heaven, in the skies, and in the earth. Most, the most beautiful thing. All right. So, what does Zayn mean? Uh, uh, Zayn, Zayn is like uh, decoration. You know, the decoration of something. You know, like uh, the, the best, the best of anything. Like the most beautiful okay. thing. All right. And then, <laughs> and then my father he said to him, and how how is so? How he can be? The most beautiful thing in the skies and the earth. Uh, there is someone is better than you. Are you saying like? Are you saying that Al Hussein is better than you? So Muhammad he said. Uh, uh, sorry, he, he answered him saying, and I swear by the one who sent me by the truth, as a prophet, that Al Hussein, the son of Ali. Uh, there is nothing higher than him in this earth. Wow. Nothing higher than him in this earth. For so they're praising more gods than more than even we can think about. They have so many gods. Yeah. And then it says, he said, and it is written in the right hand of the throne of Allah. This is written in the right hand of the throne of Allah. So the name of Hussein written in the right hand of the name of uh, of throne of Allah, that there's no one is a Draw greater. Yes to him. Yeah, but but not notice here. They, what they are saying that Al Hussein is greater than Muhammad himself. Wow. Yeah, because the you know the, that question is so simple. They said to him, is this? "Are you saying there is he is greater than you? You know, are you saying he is greater than you, Muhammad? What is the answer? Is the answer yes? It because it's written on the right hand of the throne of God, a lamp of Hudu, Uda. A lot of wow. what? So, do you have the verse and the, the number of this? Uh... Yeah, this hadith we, we can uh, actually. This is uh, the Shia. Uh, let us see. 
Um, oh, wow. Okay, here. This is the book of Biharul Anwar. Okay. The book of Biharul Anwar. Anwar. Value number, value number 36. Page number yeah. 205. Okay. 205. And, uh, you know, I can give you the link actually in your Skype if you want. You know. I'm sure, thank you. But I don't know if you can open it because it's in Arabic and that the link is in Arabic in the top. Uh, that was for anyway. later. Well, but I will need all this for to translate it. Yeah. So uh, this is what they believe, and this is what uh, what it is. And I mean, uh, uh, it's a crazy religion. What we can say, you know, this is how it is. Uh, so here you notice how the Shia they use Muhammad to make Ali family gods in earth to the point even Muhammad saying that he is the best and there's nothing better than him neither in earth not even in heaven you know and not only that if you read carefully he said that he is the ship of salvation he is the light of guidance and the ship of salvation let us see if it's a translation come in here um you see here we go it says God he said it's written in the God throne what is written he is the lamp of guidance of Huda and the lifeboat the salvation boat and he is wow. a, and he is the good Imam all right so yes. so here you you will you will notice how much those people they uh, what is Huda Huda mean guidance okay yeah Huda is an Arabic Huda. word for for guidance yeah mm -hmm. Uh, and he is the most proud. He is the animation for Allah. Yemenite? He was a Yemenite. Uh, no, no, not Yemenite. Not right here. Lifeboat, no, a good. Uh, no, this is uh, this is Google translation. You know, Google translation. Oh. Yeah, yeah. The, the, here it says like he is Yaminullah. Yamin, it's the mean, not Yemen, Yemenite. It is like he is in the right hand of Allah. Um, so in the right side of uh, the hand of Allah, in the throne of Allah, it's written those information. All right. And not mm -hmm. only that, it says that he uh, he his made uh, uh, Allah he put in his uh, backbone uh, a sperm which is very good and it's blessed and it blessed. is it, yeah. yeah. So he put in in his in his you see here a sperm is a blessed in his in his backbone. All right. And then so he what said, is that whole crucifixion uh, in his crucifixion, crucifixion? This is yeah, this is translation for the word sulbahu. It's Google translation, you know, sulbahu, which means from his lineage. That's why we cannot use okay. Google translation really as a, as a source of, uh, especially in Arabic. Uh, mm -hmm. So, okay. yeah, and, and then he says, in, if you pray in the name of Al Hussein, your prayer will never be rejected by Allah. You know, so anything you ask for in the name, he he will intercede. His name. Is he's the, he's the intercessor, all right? He, and he is the intercessor in the in the judgment too, uh, day too. Uh, so, uh, Hussein is an intercessor in judgment day. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because you intercede for you. But they're you... all deified then, aren't they? They're actually deified into the same same position as Christ in their in their minds. Yeah, but uh, this is what it says, you know, and then. Uh, uh, there is a here. There is a something really funny in the story. It says he asked him, "And what is this nutfa in the in the backbone of my beloved Al Hussein? What is that sperm in the backbone?" He's asking about the sperm. What is that sperm in the backbone of Al Hussein? Let us see where the translation here. Okay, hold on. Uh, the Google is sorry, not, the Google is not translating. Really. Sorry, go on. Uh, I think it's getting late for you, right? You need to go, maybe. 
No, 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 no. I just, I, I just wanted to say sorry if I, I interrupt you sometimes no, no. and ask so many questions because I'm so, you know, so uh, shocked and I get, get, keep no, getting okay. out shocked by you. Like, uh, it's anyway, just so they're asking creepy. about the sperm, the sperm, which is, a, a, you know, uh, uh, he have uh, uh, Hussein, he have in his back. He said, "This is sperm is like the moon." <laughs> you know, moon. Okay. Uh, so this this uh, this is sperm like the moon, and anyone who follow his sperm, which means his seeds, uh, he will be a murderer, and he will be uh, sorry, he will be uh, uh, doing the right thing, and he will be very wise in the eyes of Allah. Yeah. So here you will see that uh, the Shia they really worship Muhammad family more than Muhammad himself. Muhammad, as I said, is just a cover. Yeah. It's like a, a ticket to get in, you know. So Muhammad himself is mm. saying that uh, Al Hassan is greater than me. What do you want more? <laughs> so all these sheikhs are born from these family people, right? Like uh, Muhammadin, Al Muhammad. Well, none of them actually born from Muhammad. Muhammad have nothing to do with any of them. Those are born from Fatima, the daughter of Khadija, and from Ali. Yeah. No. <laughs> Yeah, so the daughter from Khadija and Ali. Sorry. So um, so Khadija was um you said the daughter from uh, Khadija and Ali. Yeah, because uh, Ali he married the daughter of uh, Khadija, right? So yeah, the daughter of Khadija married from Ali. It's not they, the daughter and, of Muhammad. She have, was just the daughter of Khadija. Nothing, nothing to do with Muhammad because Muhammad don't have kids from Khadija, and Ali is not from Muhammad. He is just a cousin. Oh yeah. So what the Shia? So there is no bloodline. All of it is a lie. Yeah. So what the Shia did simply, they created a lot of his stories uh, in order to worship uh, Ali and his family. You know, and um, they claim that Muhammad said those things. So anyone who who would dare, okay, Muhammad, he is the prophet of Allah. He said those things. That Ali uh, Hussein is a greater than me. So if he says that, it must be true. This is why you see the, the the Shia, they go and they do Hajj to Karbala, asking for forgiveness from Allah. Nobody want to go to the Kaaba no more. You know, and they pray on them, right? Uh, and when Muhammad he says Al Hussein, he is the the lamp of guidance, and he is the 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 the, the boat of uh, uh, salvation. I mean, what is left? No, yeah. he is the boat. <laughs> so you, do not, to, you yeah. do not need Muhammad. You do not need Islam. You do not need anyone. All what you need is Al, Al Hussein. Yes. Wow. Yeah, and even Allah, He wrote the throne in in the right side of His throne that uh, uh, Al Hussein is the uh, the guidance, the lamp for all mankind, and He is the rescue ship. I mean, what what is left? What is left for Muhammad? So is, what is even left for Allah yeah. Himself? Because it's not Allah who will save you; it is Hussein, mm. right? Well, I didn't know it was this bad. I thought they would deify him to the extent, but you're just saying that this they actually see as Hussein as some kind of a god because this whole Ashura that we have in Iran, they slap themselves, they you know paint themselves for him, and even his name. Brings tears to the most, uh, you know, fanatic people, and he, he's seen as some kind of a person who gave up his own son. And look at the comparisons to Christ. He gave up his own son in in a war, uh, and he was totally innocent. And he did that because he's only in love. And so people now praise him as the masum. He he was killed as masum. Yeah, uh, Muslim, which mean, it must mean he is a perfect. He is a perfect. He don't commit sin. He is a yeah. perfect person, which means he's God. You know, because the mm -hmm. only one who don't commit sin is God. So they made them gods. They, this is why they call themselves the Ethnay Ashariya, the twelve Imams, because they believe that yeah. the twelve Imams are a perfect who never commit sin, not even once. Yeah. You know, so uh, 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 those this the family of Muhammad and their descendant entered the twelve. They are perfect. They are not a human. They are gods on earth. And the, the fiction story starts from Al-Hussein. 
and then Al Hassan, and then the children's after that. It's an inheritance business, you know. Is there something, is there something historical that you could point me to that hasn't actually or hasn't actually existed in, in, in history? Well, we cannot really. I mean, there's nothing in history, even about Muhammad, we cannot find something to make him exist. You know, there's nothing, there's no source about Muhammad. Where is when even when the when the, when the Muslims occupy Jerusalem, if we read uh, the siege of Jerusalem and when the Muslims occupy it, even after that, even the Christian, they never mention a name of a person. His name is Muhammad, which is very strange. Yeah, it's very strange. You know, there's no mention of him, so we don't know who is Muhammad. Muhammad, I believe, is just a name was given later, or or Muhammad he gave himself such a name, but this is not his name. It's a title. This is why nobody uses it. And this is what I said, yeah. yeah. So his real name, what is his real name according mean, to Muslim according books, to you? Like according to Muslim to... books, not according to me. His real name was Qatar, yeah. you know? But some Muslims didn't deny that. They said this is, uh, you know, not true. Because yes, his grandfather, he called him uh, Qatham. But then his mother, Qatham. she asked the grandfather to call him Muhammad. But it doesn't make sense because the word Muhammad means the praised one. So how Muhammad is a prophet, but yet he is a praised one. Praised one is God. Right? No. Yeah. And even actually, even uh, even Allah supposedly, uh, every all day long he look at his right side uh, for the name of Al Hussein is written next to him. He cannot he cannot keep his eyes away from Al Hussein. And Al Hussein, uh, 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 he will be in the right side of Allah in the throne. And each time a, a, a follower, which means Shia, he cry for him, Al Hussein will look at him, and he will ask. He will he will. Uh, he will uh, like uh, because he is uh, close to Allah, so he will be forgiven. Uh, mm. uh, even even some story says that he will be speaking from above the throne. Hussein himself is sitting in the throne of Allah. <laughs> wow! Yeah. Uh, so maybe they, some, some story, actually Hussein is actually the Muhammad in a different form. So what what, what does Qatim mean in his uh, like? Does it have bad? Uh, there is many meaning. Uh, it, it can be the sperm of the hyena. It can be the damaged milk. It can be many. Sperm things. of the hyena. Yeah, yeah. It might have many meaning. Uh, uh, there is there is a hadith. It says that Allah He gave him even the throne, which means Allah don't have a throne no more. But I'm trying to find. Um, uh, the reference I remember so the hadith so. very well but I cannot find uh, let us see yeah he uh, Allah he gave the throne uh, he gave the throne to Al Hussein imagine even the throne became the throne of Al Hussein as simple as that and where did god go when he gave his throne uh, to maybe him? he took a vacation to hawaii or something you know maybe he, um, maybe he retired you never know, <laughs> you know? Oh, okay. yeah so you know there's endless stories uh, and all of them obviously those people they they make tons of stories about muhammad and fa his family and ali and none of them make sense and yet they say to us you know that you worship a man both of them Shia and Sunni they worship men we don't worship men we everything worship God. stone man sex they worship like they they have a they have a Kaaba filled with all sorts of gods black stone kissing black stone stones forgive your sin if you touch them etc so Islam is a is a you know is a collection of madness and the more you learn about it the more you get dizzy you don't get knowledgeable you get dizzy because what is that <laughs> you know and the more you read about it you find yourself like you know nothing yet because it's stupid it's it's, it's endless and they fabricate yeah. tons of stories and you do not know where is the real source where is the truth you know uh uh, but it also gives a lot of platform to new Muhammads because now in Iran what you have because most Iranians like a lot not most a lot of Iranians don't you know accept this sort of stuff and they go into these uh, so like intellectualized uh, pseudo prophets who come in the name of Muhammad but because it's such a vague term Muhammad like the praise was hand so that they can claim all sorts of stuff and even sound of course naturally better than Muhammad because they at least have you know have some brains but it's just 
fascinating how this sect is just, you know, whatever culture that is filtered through, that it is just multiplying in such a different variation than what Orthodox Islam even is. It's just endless nonsense, braid altogether. Try to make sense of it, but it doesn't make sense. Well, nothing in this religion makes sense anyway. And, uh, uh, you know, the only way it makes sense for you if you decide to become a believer, and which means whatever they say to you, you accept, you know. That's it. But uh, does it make sense that uh, all of those things given to this guy, Al Hassan Al Hussein? What? Who are they? What they did? I mean, what? What? What happened? And so, so, and why Allah did not make Al Hussein? He is the prophet. Why he chose Muhammad? If if Al Hussein is the greatest, so it's it's crazy stories, stupid stories, and uh, uh, all of this is about politics and money, sex and money. All of what Islam mm -hmm. is about, sex and money. Even after Muhammad death. The Muslims they start fighting over sex and money. They never fought about God. They are fighting over who want to take power, which means he will have more slaves for sex and more money, mm. and you know control. Have nothing to do with God. Muhammad himself he have nothing to do with God. All what he want pay me money you live. Pay me. You don't even even the Quran says you don't have to believe. All what you say, don't say we are, don't say we are believers, say we are Muslims. So Islam don't don't care if you are a believer or not. Islam care if you say I'm a Muslim or not. All what you need to mm -hmm. do, just say Shahada, and then you are fine. That's it. No. Yeah. Anyway, but, I, and it, I, I think. But amazing thing that, like, um, it is sold as something so simplistic almost similar to the abrahamic faith but it is so more complex and like you wanted to like go wash yourself with holy water after no, there is really nothing to do with abrahamic stuff. faith what what islam have to do with abrahamic faith how where yeah all right. this is what i this is actually my last question so because i don't i think maybe you want to you know talk about this topic in your own manner maybe more than i just going to stop with this but uh so what um what is this whole story about ishmael being the source of islam can you okay talk about that a little no you know muhammad he needed uh, to make himself connected to abraham since he was trying to get close to the jews so mm -hmm. uh, uh, in order to be accepted as a prophet then you have to come from abraham and then uh, the jews did not accept what he said did not believe in what he said otherwise you know the, I, okay i want to ask the muslims who want to show me where in the quran it says that muhammad is from ishmael Any Muslim want to show me where it says in the Quran that Muhammad is from Ishmael? And here you notice right away how the Muslims are, they are in trouble. Because this is the most important book. You see, the God of Islam mentioned that this guy is the son of this guy, the guy is son of guy. How come Muhammad did not say in his Quran that he is the son of Abraham too? If you, if you, uh, uh, if you go in the Quran, we will find the following that Allah confirmed that the prophethood is from Isaac and Jacob only when Allah supposedly mentioned where the prophethood will come it says and we bestowed on him Isaac and Jacob, and we established the prophethood and the scriptures among his seed. So, mm -hmm. who is the seeds he's talking about? Jacob. So they believe the same thing then. They, that as Christians believe that it came from yeah, Isaac, see, not this is, from this Ishmael. Is what, this is what Islam. This is the, this is the this is the deception of Islam. Is to try to make you believe that we have the same thing. Yeah. But Muhammad he he used this just to make to fool you to make you say okay you see we believe in Jacob we believe in Isaac we believe in Mary we believe in Isa we believe in Musa so what is wrong come on we believe in the same God no the, the, this is just a deception of the devil to make you believe that he believe in the same as you believe but if you look mm -hmm. with me here carefully the Quran in this point it dropped the name in this verse it dropped the name of Ishmael but Ishmael is the eldest or the elder right. Okay. Where, so first, because should, I see Jacob and, and, right. and Isaac, but I don't see Shouldn't Ishmael. you start with Ishmael if you are counting his seeds? Oh. Ishmael is the older. Okay. So if Allah here talking about Ishmael, uh, about Muhammad, 
he will be from Ishmael he should mention that secondly if Allah is saying that from from Ishmael will be prophet well this is the verse speaking where the prophet will come we made in his seeds and he mentioned Isaac and Jacob the mm -hmm. prophethood that's it so Muhammad here in this chapter here in this verse uh, he was trying to get close to the Jews and he knew that the Jews do not approve Ishmael to be anything important so in this point makes sense yeah in this point Muhammad he told them okay Jacob and Isaac and etc prophethood whatever you wish but later when 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 he noticed that they don't they would not agree with him anyway he said that uh, he added he started speaking about Ishmael but nowhere he said in the Quran that Ishmael is a prophet of uh, uh, from uh, from him will be a guy his name is Muhammad you see Muhammad he said that Isa said a prophet will come after me his name is Ahmed even the name there does not make sense mm. because if Muhammad name is Muhammad why Isa call him Ahmed is Ahmed a title too obviously they are titled because it's mean the praised one the one people praise uh, so obviously uh, this is not yeah. a, this is not the name because if if the Quran is saying that the one will come after Isa his name is Ahmed why Muhammad his name is Muhammad you see a name is a name unless what is meant exactly. here what, what yeah. is meant here exactly. is a title which have a meaning the name is doesn't matter you know what I mean mm. Like sometimes you can call a lord with letter, small letter, uh, uh, for the king or the master of a slave. He called his uh, honor lord, but can be God, right? Depend in, in the in the in the location or etc. So here, Muhammad saying that Isa said there is a messenger will come after me. His name is Ahmed. Okay, who is Ahmed? And they say they say according to them we have this in Isaiah, which is such a nonsense. Yeah, look here. This is the Muslim translation. They said. A prophet will come after me his name the praised one this is alone is a blasphemy against God because how Muslim they say we don't believe we don't worship yeah. a man and you say that Muhammad is the praised one so if Muhammad is the praised one who is the praised to exactly who is praising Allah then his name is the praised one <laughs> <laughs> so even his name is against being people who believe, they, they lie they say we believe in the oneness of God your oneness God is, mm. is Muhammad not Allah he is the That's praised that, one yeah. no yeah is that he has a thousand thousand heads this monster yeah. not only that actually is so listen Muhammad Muslims I can show you right now Muslim Sunni not only Shia they say that Muhammad this is Sunni uh, Muhammad he have 99 names the same as Allah Wow! Yeah. Can you show me that? Yeah, I will show it. I never. I'm searching in right. Prophet Google. So he's also and and is the same names or different names? No, they, they, but they are very close. Almost uh, sometimes they, they are the same. This is the ninety <sighs> names of Allah. The ninety nine names of Allah and Muhammad. You see it? No, not so not yet. Allah have ninety nine names. Muhammad have ninety nine names. They are equal. Wow, yeah, and here they start counting for you the names. Here we go the names of Allah 99. We then, can't see it on your screen yet. Your books are in, uh, uh it maybe it takes time screen. for it take time for loading. Okay. Okay. It's on, it's on now. I can see, it. yeah. So Allah have 99 names, and if you scroll down, you will find you will find that Muhammad he have 99 names too. Here we go. They call him Alim. Allah is Alim. Or oh, what they did, they took off the, the the letter L in the beginning, the L. So from Al Alim, they call him Alim. So Muhammad became Alim. Al Alim. He is the one who knows everything. Yeah, Alim. Yeah. You know, the justice. How Muhammad can be justice? Muhammad is is, a, is God or is a man? How he can be justice? The only the only justice is God. Uh, so they start counting names for you, and they come with ninety nine names to make him equal to their God. Wow, yeah, and this is the link. I, I never will, knew this is the link. I will post it in the text in the chat so people they can see it. Wow, is uh, uh is uh, Al Makrain also one of his names, or is it all just for Allah? Uh, I think this is one only for Allah, the Makar, the deceiver, yeah, yeah, uh, Al Imam Khayyar. 
I don't think I did not read them all actually because they are funny and stupid. Uh, I mean, look, no. uh, Muhammad is Muftah. Muftah is the key. <laughs> Muhammad, one of his name is Muftah. Muftah, what does Muftah mean? Muftah means the key. Muhammad is the, the key. key. Yeah, Muhammad is the what? key. Muftah. Hmm. Yeah, and he is Mateen. Mateen, which means he is strong, like steel. And he is Mashkur, the one you are thankful for. And he is Mashhud, which means the one who witness for. And he is Mansur, which means the one he is uh, help or victorious. He is the Ma'moon, the one who is secure. The one who is Ma'loom, uh, the, the known. Muhammad is the known. Uh, so all those names, I mean, look, Muhammad is Mahmud. Mahmud. And what does Mahti mean? Sorry? Mahti, what does that mean? Because I saw a name Mahdi. Uh, 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 yeah, Mahdi, the the one who will guide is well guided. Will oh, guided. Okay. Yeah. So because you know that that's real real issue also to get into uh, name is Shia add, Mahdi. Add, add, additional fiction story. The Shia and Sunni they believe in the Mahdi, but the Mahdi different. And the Shia have different story. The Sunni have different story. It's a collection of fiction stupidity. You know, Muhammad is Al Kamil. He is the perfect. Look, Kamil, yeah. Kamil, perfect. Muhammad is the perfect. That means he's God. He's, he's the perfect. Muhammad is Jabbar. Uh, one of the names of Allah is Jabbar. Al Kafi, the one who is sufficient. I have a question. Allah is sufficient, These supposedly. Scholars, they know all of this. How can they not see that they're, they're deifying friend, their Muhammad? Said, what's, what's going on? Who said they don't see? But the problem is. The Muslims always they face people who know nothing. This is why they debate and they choose clearly who they want to debate. They debate people who they have no idea what Islam is about. Well, just for themselves, how can they remain? Because everyone is made in the image of God. We want to be truthful to at least what we believe, right? So when they no. have all this knowledge, how they how do they not flee Islam and run from it? No, well, I don't about get the scholars. It. The scholars they know. Majority of Muslims they have no idea. The majority they have no, no idea. Yeah. But the, wow. the, the scholars, they are doing business anyway. They are getting the benefit. Big belly, big stomach, four wives, big salary. So the mission accomplished. Mm. <laughs> the, the mission is accomplished. Yeah. Perfect mission. You know? Yeah. So uh, as you see, and, and actually there's a, there's a hadith where it says uh, that Al, uh, uh, Allah, he sent Jibreel. Uh, and he said to him, if not you, Muhammad, uh, <clears throat> uh, nothing was created. <coughs> wow. <laughs> let, us read, let us read together. Here we go. This is the hadith. Hadith Lawlaka, and this is sunnah.org. So a Muslim cannot say this is, you know, false. Or... It says that uh, uh, somebody asking, is it true that this hadith it says that Lawlaka ma khalaqta al-aflak, aflak, which means, if not you, no reason for me to uh, uh, nothing to be created. If not you, the answer, indeed, the Prophet of Allah, Allah pray on him and salute him, is the reason for a creation of Adam, alayhi salam, which means peace on him, and the universe. If the Prophet of Allah, Allah pray on him and salute him, was not existence into existence, then the throne of Allah, the arsh, the chair, the kursi, the loh, which means the the tablet. And the qalam, which means the pen, the skies, the earth, the heaven, the hell, the trees, the stones, and all the creatures will not be exist. Do you see it? Wow. Yeah. Muhammad is God. Actually, based on this story, Allah himself is exist for the sake of Muhammad. I mean, what is the benefit of Allah? Just to create all those things for Muhammad, to make Muhammad happy. Allah, is yeah. a ser Allah himself is a servant for Muhammad to create things for him, to make him happy. Teeny in a bottle. <laughs> That's a, so you see here and they are giving you reference more and more like the prophet of Allah he said that Allah he said to him when Adam made a mistake he asked oh Allah I ask for your sake for the sake of Muhammad to forgive me Allah he looked at Adam and he says what how you recognize Muhammad when I have not yet created him Adam said oh Allah when you have created me and blew into my spirit, I lifted my head and I saw it's written on the throne, Arsh, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Adulullah. 
<laughs> so he saw the name of Muhammad. Okay. So I got to know. So yeah. So I got to know that you would only join your name with whom or with him who is most beloved to you. See how smart Adam. So now he's asking Allah, please forgive me for the sake of Muhammad. And Allah, like, what? How you know? How you know Muhammad? You idiot. <laughs> Who told you about Muhammad? I did not even create him yet. So he said, no, 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 hold on. When I put my head up, I saw his name in your throne, and I said to myself, this is, must be a very great person for you, and you love him very much. That's why you put your name there. So, and now, and then Allah answers, said, Allah, Allah said, oh Adam, you have spoken the truth. Indeed, Muhammad is more beloved to me from anything. And when you ask me for his sake, I burden you. That's it. <laughs> All right, yeah, and, and the same story. Look here, it says Allah revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Isa. This is Isa, suppose Jesus. Uh, it says, <laughs> Oh Isa, have faith on Muhammad. So, Jesus have to have faith in Muhammad, he have to. Hmm. Allah what do you mean? Just Isa, what, it says, Oh Adam, Isa. No, no, this is about Isa now. Allah, he told Isa, You have to have faith on Muhammad, you have to believe in Muhammad. Hmm. Okay, okay, and then. Uh, and he says, and order your ummah, which means your followers, to do the same. Yeah. If Muhammad was not to exist, I would not have created Adam, nor I would have made the heaven and or hell. Uh, you see? So Allah said to Isa, I created everything for the sake of Muhammad. So tell your people to follow Muhammad, okay? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Anyway, I think we uh, have... Actually, there is an Iranian judge who told me once, and this was his logic too i said why are we women so suppressed in iran we have you know half the rights women can only marry one husband who even if he abuses her she is not allowed to leave but men have you know all these questions he said well um I would, he, he actually will answer you by saying like uh what is that of your concern i just love men more <laughs> this is a judge in iran this is a highly educated person who would yeah. say such a thing to you yeah. But it's all driven from this madness. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we have enough for today. Uh, it's getting late for you, as I, I, I think, in your time, you're right? And your dog, maybe. Uh, it, is... it was mind blowing. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you so much for giving me a platform to, to ask all these questions because these are the questions that I hear many of my uh, Iranian followers ask. And you know, I never knew. And they, they don't know because never ever could they ask people about this stuff. They would be, you know, it's not even allowed just in Islam to ask stuff like this. So um, thank you a lot. Um, I don't know if you want to say something. In a... That's all. Well, thank you very much for being here. And um, you can invite your friends if they want to call us. And I will be happy to answer them too. Sure. All right. Uh, and also about this video, can, um, can you let it on so I can actually download it? We'll, we'll download I, it. Yeah, I, will, I, I will leave it for the coming a few hours. You can download it, please. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. God take, bless take you. Care. Take care. God bless. And take care. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. All right. <laughs> As you see, this is Islam, and we have no sugar coating. And by the way, Iranian are the biggest converted church in USA. I never saw a convert from Islamic the Islamic cult in the size as Iranian. We have Abdul. Yes, Abdul. Assalamu <coughs> alaikum, brother. Can you hear me? Wa alaikum, assalam. But please give me one second. I'll get my laptop here. Please, one second. So, what are you calling me something. if your laptop is not ready? Call me when your laptop is ready. Okay, give me one second. One second for a Muslim is one century. One second. This guy, each time he sees somebody leaving Islam, he gets upset. <laughs> yeah. See, we have dogs today. We have many dogs that are barking.
Well, you know, the Muslims in the beginning, they try to deny and to fight, but they cannot do that after all, you know, because, uh, uh, you know, they will see that we are not, uh, everything we say is, uh, we put it in the screen. Right? Nothing, no fabrication, no addition, uh, no uh, fiction. We are just putting what is there in their books, what they can say. And remember, yet they were saying uh, he's lying. We are showing them in the screen. Everything we say, it's in the screen. And then they will say, liar. You are a liar. You see, he said the one, th one second. I'm afraid he would do the same as the Muslim Sheikh who was debating me. He said he want to go to the bathroom many more than 10 years ago. He never came back. Yes, I, <coughs> yes, I <coughs> Drink camel, brother, are you dead? Drink camel urine for your benefit, your health. I'm, I'm worried about you. You're coughing too much. No, you guys talked so, so long. Yeah, I was uh, watching TV and said that I, I was eating some pitas. But um, and then eating, I uh, what? saw that you you are eating. I what? tried to quick as possible because I want to uh, bring something something up. Just like five minutes, man. If mm -hmm. you give me just a few, uh, it's a few seconds, brother. Go ahead. Okay, so she was talking like, "Oh, Islam is so oppressive towards women." That's not true. Islam, Islam gave Islam. so much rights. The first woman, yeah, who opened the university, the first university in the world, mm -hmm. was created by a Muslim woman in Morocco. Really? Oof. Yes. Me. First university. A Muslim world, the whole Muslim world, the first university. And what do you teach in the Muslim university? Say again. And what do you teach in a Muslim university? How to kill Christians and Jews? <laughs> Well, you know why? Because Muhammad, peace be blessed be upon him, he said, okay, find knowledge from okay, the grave on, to okay. the creator. Okay, hold on. So, uh, isn't it your prophet said that the one who lead them is, uh, the, uh, if a woman, she lead a nation, she, this nation is going to face a failure? Um, um, uh, uh, women yes or no? To, uh, yes or no? Well, uh, you know, it's the statistics say otherwise though the statistics actually support that's, 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 this. No, 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 no. i'm asking you did your prophet says that people who allow a woman to lead them they will be destroyed yes but are you against this okay well hold on you just said to me that a woman the first university in the world which is a big a big uh, garbage is was created by a muslim woman but your prophet says women are stupid and anyone who listen to them he's a stupid and if people agree with them they are stupid so you are saying to me that you Muslims are a bunch of stupid because you don't agree with your prophet who said women are stupid so what do you say um uh, 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 here we go the hate in front of you and this is Sahir Bukhari one sec I'll open YouTube hmm. And as you see, the Persian and the lady she was talking to me, she was from Persia, and they have what's, a, what's they Persia? have a king who is a female, which means a queen. Yeah. So you see what Islam did. Iran. Say again? Iran used to be so ruled. Good. Iran ruled by a woman. Since Islam came, Iran ruled ruled by idiots. So what you are saying to me is about Allah He gave the women rights. Khadija herself, she was the boss of Muhammad. Since Muhammad he came and became a prophet, Khadija died. He took her money. He forced the women to wear a, a back, a plastic back, made it from black. So why you are lying to us? It says Islam gave the women. Islam gave the women the right to be beaten. Is it true that the Quran says you can beat them? Um. Uh. Mm, uh. No. Uh. No. Islam. What? <laughs> no, no, brother. I, I'm serious, brother. Um, Islam I'm serious too. Is, uh, Isn't it the Quran says you can beat your wives? Yes or no? Uh, no, because you know why. You know why, brother? No. So what is verse here saying? Chapter four, verse number thirty-four. Why are you are lying? Why are you are lying? Are you a liar? 
No, no, of course not. Okay, so why, you, why you are saying no? Why you are saying no? Are you trying to... Do you think you can lie to Christian Prince? Be honest with me. Do you think you can lie to me? I'm... I'm... Here we go. It's in front of you. Uh, uh, here we go. Chapter 4, verse number four, uh, 34. I want you to read it for us. Does it say if a woman, you fear that she is disobedient? You fear. She did not even became disobedient. You beat them. You scourge them. Yes or no? Um, wait, wait, this 34? Yeah. 4, 34. 4, 34. Oh, 434 okay uh, men are in charge of women because Allah have made the one of them to excel the other hmm. and because they spend the pro of for the properties so good women are obedient guarding a secret but I you as continue a Christian reading, I continue, reading. Continue, re says, continue reading don't stop continue reading <laughs> okay but okay uh, so good women are the obedient guarding in secret that which Allah have guarded mm. as for those from who you fear rebellion mm. admonish them and banish them to bed support and scourge them then if they what, what uh, obey you what does scourge they mean huh what scourge they mean I, I, my English is not good what does scourge they mean let me see let me see once again mm. are you searching Google now uh, no, uh, uh, my uh, no. I, I have a book, you know, where the meanings of words are, man. Oh, okay. I'm gonna hmm. a whip used as instrument of punishment. Huh? Hmm. What scores they mean? So, so your God Allah says scores the women. So you said to me, she open a university, she go home, she get beaten. So what she do? Go to school? She have pimples in her face and she have a balloon in her head from beating. And she opened university. Why are you are lying to us? Did you? Did you? I, I'm not making fun of your mother, by the way. I'm just asking a question. Did your father? Ever, you did, did, you, did your father give give your mother once like a, a blue eye, like he punched her in no, the eye? Never. never. You will get a beating mm. for that. That's mean your father is a disgusting Muslim. He's not a good Muslim. Your father is not a disgusting Muslim. Is that, is that mean that your mother she was always obedient? That's why he did not beat her. No, but what the Quran is, says, if she if she fear that they are going to be disobedient for you, what is the solution? Beat them. Uh, obviously, your mother always she obey your 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 father his, his God, so she obey him, and this is why he did not beat her because you said he never gave her a blue eye. What do you mean by obey? Well, if you say to your wife, make some tea for me, and she she did not go right away, you can beat the hell of her. If you say to your wife, take off your panty, I'm I'm horny, and she refused to do so, you can beat her. Any reason, it's up to you. So, well, um, so good. What's on? I'm not. It says obey. So anything you have to do with obedience, anything you say to her. She don't do you beat her but what does the hadith so on this uh, verse say it says otherwise though what it otherwise the verse. Where it says, it says no here we go the hadith, the hadith says you beat them until you make your the hadith says you you beat them until you make their skinny greener and here we go this is the story the story no no okay hold on i will make you read it hmm. oh. here we go read read with me this is aisha speaking hmm. i'm listening go ahead I'm not going to talk. I will let you read. Read all the sentence, huh? And I'm listening. Go ahead, bro. Can you, you have a beautiful voice, man. What I, if you? I have no. What? I have what? You have you have a good voice. You have a beautiful voice, man. My friend, I'm asking you about women beating. Are you flirting with me now? <laughs> what my what my beautiful voice no, have no, to do? No. I mean, Muslim women they flirt with me. Even Muslim men they want to flirt me life life on air. What what do you, what do you have to do with my no. beautiful voice? what this have to do, what this have to do with my topic why you are saying to me you have a beautiful voice man okay okay i'll, I'll read man i'll read okay. uh rifa hmm. divorced his wife whereupon abdurrahman bin az-zubair al-qurazi married her aisha said that the lady came wearing green veil to her aisha of her husband and showed a green spot on the skin caused by beating 
it was a habit of ladies to support each other. So when Allah's messenger came, Aisha said, I have not seen any woman suffering as much as a believing woman. Um, let me see. Brother. If I divorce this wife, I put on the wrong man. Damn, I got bullied or something, man. I turn off. Oh, uh, brother, are you there? So, what oh, you... I thought you were. So, I heard you something. So, what do you say? Did he, did he, the husband, he beat her until her clothes, her skin became greener than her clothes? Yeah. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, Greenville. Mm. So Greenville. you, so you beat your wife until you make her skin greener than her clothes. What does that mean? And the prophet is we'll there, see. and the prophet took the side of the man. The prophet he warned the women not to do that again, and he agreed with the man. So he agreed with the man beating his wife until her skin is greener. Your prophet said in different hadith, "Don't break their bones," which means you can beat them, but don't break their bones. Beat them, make their skin greener. Did your did your father make your mother's skin greener before? No. What about yellow? But, um, what about the blue? What, what? Hmm? Brother, what? um, I can't. What? But uh, the women that yeah, they used to get, um, what's what's called, um, the the Arabs they used to put women in sand. That's a lie. That's a lie. There's no Arab. Here we go. Tell me a story. Who is the Arab that we would? Uh, how if the Arab they put their women in sand? That means there's no mothers, and we are, I will not be born because no women left. If we don't have women, where we, we will have babies from? We will, we will download them from the internet. That's a big fat lie. <laughs> no, no. But... The verse about Al Mawuda. It's about the one who is killed. Supposedly, God will say to the one who was killed, "For what reason you they killed you?" That's all. It's about a crime committed against an innocent person. Have nothing to do with females. Nowhere it says infant. It's a lie. Well, <clears throat> you know, in uh, First Timothy two eleven says a woman should learn in quietness and feel submission. I do not permit a woman to teach or have authority over men. She must be silent. This is in the church when a woman they are talking about having uh, make making a recipe how to make. Uh, uh, ice cream or to make salad so he's saying to them shut up this is not the time for that either you are a polite and you behave you are in the house of god because usually the one who speak about things not uh, not not in the right time it, this is the women so he's speaking to the women and the teacher is always the man in the synagogue this is a jewish synagogue where always all of them they are jews orthodox jews the man is the teacher the women and the men they are listeners so there's one guy his name is rabbi and the rest they listen so women who they are speaking in the church and they have no excuse to do so then they have but if you read the whole chapter you will see that women they can teach and women not only that we have a book it's called the book of judges where you see that women they are judges you, you can you can see in the bible that women they are prophets too so the bible says women are prophet women are judges and we have women are like mary so did jesus says to mary shut up don't talk mary she came to him and she asked him to do a miracle he says this is not my time but even though yet he did what he she asked him for so you have a wrong understanding and try to fool yourself the quran teaching that the women she is nothing islam teaching that the woman is just a sex toy this is why jesus said you marry only one person one 
the man he leave his family and the women they join together they became a god for what for the god of christianity teach that the man is the same as a christ giving himself to the church and the woman is the same as the church so in a christianity women is equal to the church which is holy for us while in islam women she is just a sex toy Hello. Did you decide to leave Islam or not yet? C could you could you scroll down on the screen? Oh, okay. A bit. All right. There we go. And even here, the the, the the story, by the way, your prophet he forced the women to be raped by the man because the man he trying to rape her, even though he is her husband. But you cannot force women into sex. No, in Islam you can. And the prophet said to her clearly. You have to taste his juice. Is that true that your prophet says to this woman that she have to taste his juice and she have to taste she you have to taste her juice? Let me read, man. Hmm. I don't know. And the prophet said to her, you need to know, you cannot get back to your previous husband. So that whole story is what? This woman, she don't want this man. She want to marry a different man. So Muslims are forcing a woman to have sex with the man. She don't want him. And Muhammad take the side of the man who want to rape her. Read carefully. Muhammad said, not me. Then you know that it is unlawful for you to remarry Rifa. Rifa is a previous husband. Muhammad, he come with a rule that if your father divorced your mother three times, she cannot go back to him unless she sleep with different guys. Is that correct? No, there's no for you. Mm. Hmm. So you. Yeah, probably. Man. So what do you think about about the prophet saying you cannot go back to the man who you married before unless you have intercourse with the new man? What is the wisdom of that? No, it doesn't say. Um, it says stress three times. Okay, she now he was he divorced her three time and now she married a new husband and Muhammad saying you cannot go back to the previous husband unless you have bing bing boom boom with this guy. Yes. So why she became lawful for him to the previous husband if the guy do boom boom? What is the logic? Like uh, the boom boom will certify her to be a wife again for him? No, like no, no, woman, no. It's, it's, this is what it's saying. It's uh, read, read it, read it. You cannot get back unless he do boom boom to you. Yeah, but this this thing is talking about. Um, wait, 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 wait. That she wanna go back to her previous husband. Do you see? You cannot remarry Rifa. Remarry Rifa. This is the previous husband, so she cannot go back to the yeah. previous husband unless she do boom boom. So now tell me what the boom boom will do to her. What how that will make her lawful to go back to the previous husband? Um, because if she does that, her her previous husband will accept her. If she does what? So let's say let's say um, I am uh, with a woman, yeah. Mm. And who is and the then, you know, who is the woman? Who is the woman there? Course. You are the woman, or and, and she is the man, or who is the man? I'm confused. I'm, I'm the man. I'm the man. I don't know because you say to me uh, you have a beautiful voice. So I'm no, not sure no, now. no, no. I didn't say nothing, man. Uh, okay, you must say. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, my ears was uh, okay. No problem. Yeah, it's, it's what Jibril saying that. Okay. Mm. Okay. <laughs> So are you saying no, the Quran? Are you saying the Quran did not say that a woman, if she is divorced three times, she have to have sex with a new additional uh, a guy so she can go back to the previous guy? Are you denying? I think I think there's some righteousness in there. What, what is the righteous? Okay, so you divorce your wife three times, and now she have to go and take off her panty and go to my bedroom. I sleep with her. She can't go back to you. What is the righteousness about that? No, she doesn't have to do that. She has Only to. Here we go. Your she... prophet saying that. Read it, my friend. Read it. Read it. If you want, he said, you know that it is unlawful for you to remarry Rifa unless you do boom boom with Abdul Rahman. So, what the boom boom of Abdul Rahman will do to this woman to make her lawful for her previous husband? Tell us. It's like a test. Test? Testing what? Testing her vagina? No. 
Well, he was doing boom, like, he was doing like boom, said, he was doing I'm boom, boom, he was doing boom, and boom, where? Divorce, and then we marry again, and we divorce, okay, we marry again, we divorce, we marry again. Well, you Muslims, okay, chaos, if you don't, if you don't, if, uh, if Islam is against divorcing and remarrying, well, why you, Muhammad, allow you to divorce and marry as much as you wish? Still, this one will no, not prevent you because still you can have her back. Oh, what she need to do? She goes sleep around again, and she came back to you, and now she became more of a whore because she's sleeping around in order to come back to you. So you made her a whore, so everybody can jump on her. What is, what is the wisdom? You made her sleep with other guys so she can go to the previous guy. And what's her fault? No, she is not the one who divorced. It's the husband who divorced. So now your prophet is punishing who? Is punishing the women or the man? The one who will do boom, boom to her is, is, her, is her, not him. What about your prophet says, if you divorce your wife three times, we will let them do boom, boom to you. And then he will not do that. Because now you punish the women. The women, she is the one who is going to have sex with a strange man she don't like. As you see, he's beating the head of her. Yeah. Hmm. What, what, what? But it's like if, what? if they if they marry and divorce three times, hmm. it's just chaotic, man. It's not good for the family. And then it's the best to it's just not, divorce. Is, is it good for a family to allow a man to marry many women and divorce him three times? Why your prophet allow you to divorce him three three times? Why he allow it? And now the man, the man who divorced three times, she go, she marry new husband. She go back to him. He divorced her again and again and again. So go. She sleep other man. She come back to him. He divorced this. So your your religion did not stop divorce. Your, your religion increasing the divorce, encouraging divorce. No, but it's like it's like um, it's like a test for the man. Test for what? It's the man he have nothing. That he he's losing nothing. He just get a woman in his bed. Okay, divorce. You go sleep around and come back to me after two months. What test? Well, well, if 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 the man let yeah, me ask is going to marry, why your prophet say that she have to taste his juice? What kind of a prophet he said to a woman, you have to taste his juice. What is juice? Uh that that's in oral man. That she in oral is just it's just like meaning intercourse. Uh -huh. so in Islam, when you do intercourse, you taste the juice. What do you mean by that, man? No, it's not like in the don't mouth, tell me, you know, don't ask me, uh, hey, ask your prophet. I'm asking you. Here we go. Your prophet, he says, you have to taste his juice, his sweet juice, and you have to taste his I sweet think, juice. What juice we're talking about? They know. Hmm. I know how to explain. Uh -huh. How old are you? I, I, say again. What do you mean you don't know? It's obviously he's talking about tasting the sperm. No, but if, if you're going to marry okay, what about we go? What, 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 what about we go? What about we go to the dictionary? Here we go. The word here is Asira. Hey, whatever I explain, you see, you the, word, me, the word man. here is Osaira. Osaira. Huh? <laughs> so if we go to the dictionary right now, what we will find? What this word mean? Osaira to her, wa asira to her, osaira to her. What does that word mean? Does it mean sperm? Orgasm? Yes. Hmm. So your prophet is saying you have to test his orgasm? Why? You tell me. You just said yes, not me. So why your prophet is saying you have to test his orgasm? How she can no, be lawful? I, I, how she can be lawful if she swallow his orgasm? Um no, but that's the point, isn't it? If you, if you divorce three times, this is the point. This is the point. Guys, you hear it? This is the point. The point is that in Islam, we teach a man to to swallow the orgasm of a man, and the man have to swallow the orgasm of the women. No, this is the, no, this no, what you no, said. no, You just said this is the point. I am asking you why she have to swallow his orgasm. You said this is the point. This is what you said. Because a man isn't gonna marry her when she went to with another man, and then did that stuff. What does she's his wife, now? She is enough. his wife. She, in order to come back to the previous husband, she have to test the, the 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 sperm of the new husband. Why? But but most men aren't gonna accept her. Uh, like it doesn't the matter what will man accept her. her. You, you Muslims, you marry anything. Even a goat walking down the street, you would take her. What are you talking about? I'm asking you here. Okay. Muslims, you marry anything, anything. Anything, any woman she offer herself, you take her, especially if she have money. 
don't give me now school me now here it says you cannot remarry the previous husband unless you taste this guy juice what that will do she now she have intercourse with him and now she like have to test she yeah. have to test his orgasm why um well so here's the point if if you marry and divorce three times right hmm. it's it's like chaotic man it's not good for a family and then it's just time to go you gotta find someone else but because why it's not working you need to you. taste her juice what is that i'm not asking you time to go what time to go you made the woman as a hooker she today she is here tomorrow she is there this is what islam is about there's no marriage that's why we keep saying in islam they don't believe in marriage they believe in a contract it's a sexual contract and now muhammad putin now the rules of the sexual contract you have to taste the juice because if you don't give him taste the juice, that's mean he did not have fun. Is that correct? Mm. Mm. You yeah, agree? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, no. Okay, my friend. Thank you very much for calling. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Oh, boy. And this is what, my, what this is what is missing. Men, they are saying to me, "You have a beautiful voice." I'm going to throw up. What a cult! What a cult! Anyway, guys, I don't know how many of you here is first time. How many of you are first time here? If you are first time, I advise you to leave and not to come back because you will be addicted. I'm warning you. <clears throat> uh, okay so don't forget please to subscribe and if you already subscribe don't forget to unsubscribe and this is the way you can get the blessing of Allah because Allah he give you double deeds if you uh, make uh, like one good deed can erase two double deeds. I mean two bad deeds so do this make a bad deed by subscribing and then unsubscribe then Allah will put in your credit two deeds so imagine if I can do that in the in the bank. I put one dollar, then I would draw, and then the bank they will put two dollars instead of the dollars I take off, and then I put it again, and I take it again. By the end of the month, I will have a lot of uh, money in the bank. Very smart religion. All right. <clears throat> uh, I want to marry you. So uh, don't forget to subscribe and the video will not stay long for an hour channel So if you like what we do, please really subscribe. You're welcome and Feel free to download my videos. They are for free for everybody. I don't care really actually I encourage you to download them put them in your channel I'm not like others who get angry if people download his videos the point is to spread the truth and the truth will set you free uh, and let us be serious in the chat please show respect always here uh, we notice that the Muslims when they speak to us how much they are confused and how much they are into fabrications or fabricated stories so brother the first university in the world was made by a, a Moroccan woman Mm, true story brother she opened university and she is wearing the burqa and she was beaten at home and her husband called her half brain yeah there's a lot of things you see in the media trying to fool you you see the Middle East the reason the Middle East is beyond the cave time because women is hold inside bags not burqa this is a bag because she is buried alive women is the half of the society 
So you don't allow them to go to school. You don't allow them to take an education. You don't allow them to be smart. The point, by the way, they don't want the women to be smarter than them because the man, he wants to be in control. If she is a smart, she, she, she will be smart. She will question. She will ask. She will know. And that's not good. How the, how the man can be in control? If we open university where people they can learn the real knowledge then how a fool he call himself imam he can claim to be a knowledgeable person because everybody there will laugh at him so in order to keep them under control we say to them the only knowledge we need is about Allah and Islam brother all other knowledge is not needed they curse the kuffar the kuffar are useless there's no need for them and then they buy your tv they buy your phone they buy your internet but the, everything they have in their life to make them happy is made by the kuffar nothing make a muslim happy in his life is made by muslims this is the truth including chocolate even candies is not made by them There is a there is a Muslim from who, who live in England, the stupid English people. They give him citizenship. He stand next to a bunch of uh, cows. Let me see if I can find the video. I don't know if it's flagged. Let me see. So in his video, he was saying, "Brother Tithar, look at those cows. Those cows are more useful than the infidel, the kuffar." Let us see. And behind him, there is a Mercedes Benz, and he's holding a phone, and he's using a camera. All is made by the kuffar, and the kuffar are like cows. The cows is more useful; they give milk. What the kuffar do? Nothing. I will try to find the video. I don't know if they took it down. Let us see. Yeah, I cannot find it. Maybe they took it down. But anyway, this is their idea that they are the best of mankind. And their prophets say to them that Muslims are the best of mankind. This is why they have authority to enslave you. Islam is totally different from what you hear from perfectly correct media forms. Absolutely, they teach you nothing but false news. That is the truth about Islam. This is their books, and this is their prophet, and this is their Quran. The best of mankind is those Muslims, chapter 3, verse number 110. Okay, what is the best about them? Is the one who bring them, bring who? Mankind. With the chains around their necks till they embrace Islam. You will never see that in your CNN TV. You will see that a program says ISIS is not Islam. You will see someone like James White who claimed that he is a, a, a person, a Christian who de defend the Christianity, but the fact is not. He says ISIS is not Islam. And whoever says ISIS defends is Islam is lying. Hmm. Be aware, my friend, from false teachers. Our Lord, the Messiah said, be aware of false prophet and false teachers who come to you in a close of a, a close of a sheep but in fact they are wolves be aware and here we say things as it is with no makeup no makeup which is one more worse both of them they are it is one coin have two faces 
So if you ever thought that the Shia is better than the Sunni, you are mistaken. Shia are actually more dangerous because they play, they play nice. They are very good actors until they are the upper hand, and then you will see what they will do to you. When Shia, they were not in control of Iraq. They were sheep. Sheep. They speak to the Sunni. We are brothers. We both love the Prophet. The second George Bush gave them the authority to take over the country, they start humiliating the Sunni. Just one day different between yesterday and the day after. One day. The Shia, who was humiliated for a thousand years, it is their turn to humiliate the Sunni. So both of them are the same. So when I am stronger, I will humiliate everybody. When I am weak, I am a sheep. That one man cow. Okay, let's see. Looks like somebody he found it. Thank you for searching. Dawa man cow. Yeah, I saw the video. Actually, I was going to make a video about it, but uh, you know, YouTube will. Yeah, here we go. This is the Please video. This guy some... was speaking about that we are like cows. You should download this video actually all of you he was talking about the cows that cows are better than us and look he have a Mercedes Benz he's driving Mercedes Benz and he's saying what the benefit of the kuffar like Mercedes Benz is made by, by by the Muslim by the way look at the cows they are better than the kuffar actually let me let me download it <clears throat> uh, I would download. You should every one of you actually download it and share it around. This is the truth about Islam. This is the link. All of you download it and share it around. And underneath, put the disclaimer to make it clear that this is what the Muslim says about us. No, they are not stupid. The stupid is the one who gave them citizenship. This is what he believe. The stupid is the country who gave him citizenship and let him live there, and he hate us. And he is saying, That's, you know, when when you teach such a teaching, what does that mean? Go and kill them like cows. He is not the stupid. The stupid is the country, the government, the people who gave them citizenship. They are doing what they believe. And actually, this, this man is more truthful from other Muslims. He is saying what he believes. Hmm. No, we don't teach uh, violence here, my friend. Don't, don't say that word in my chat. Stupidity is the reason of the problems anyway guys we will leave this video for a few hours so please download the video share it with your friends and I'm talking about my video not this guy video now share it with your friends post it in your uh, YouTube channel and I hope uh, mostly tomorrow I'm not going to go live on here but if I can I will but maybe not give you a break of me all right Uh, uh, Mahdi, Mahdi, uh, Saddam, he killed many Shia after the USA armed them, before the Shia never dared to open their mouth. Give me a break. Saddam, he started that because the, the war is two part. George Bush, the father, and George Bush, the son. So give me a break, Abdul. Your Shia never opened your mouth, never dared to open your mouth all your life during Saddam Hussein, until George Bush, the father, come. And then when he became weak in certain areas, and the American, they armed you. Even the war now, which happened in Iraq, the Shia, they came and they kissed the shoes of George Bush to go and free them from the dictator Saddam Hussein. And a day after he free you, you ask the American to leave. This is what the Shia do. They play taqiyya. 
All right. Anyway, guys, I think we have enough for today. Thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you. And enter we'll see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And take care. Bye-bye.